Hello YouTube, this is Jonathan Scott, or aka also known as Some Random Geeks. Why did I say aka as well as uh, uh, also known as? It's just... Uh. Anyway, um... Earlier today, I was in a hangout with S Man Speaks and uh, Lonely Wolf 1980. Uh, S Man Speaks and I were in a live chat on Owen McDonald channels when Owen McDonald was debating uh, Human Mind, I think, and um, as well as the Josie Old Man, and then also, lastly, uh, Ian Conroy. And S Man Speaks says that he believes that the Workers should not own and control the means of production. Well, I say I disagree. And S Man Speak was like, instead of like spamming that one live chat up, a, a, their his own conversation in our own chat, and stuff like that, he wanted to actually have me on his channel to discuss uh, capitalism or debate capitalism. At first, I was like, I have not even read any of Karl Marx's books. I have not read the Communist Manifesto or Das Kapital, so I am not a good representative for or a good proponent as socialists and as others. But then I thought, no, wait, well, I have my opinions on capitalists, and I have my uh, criticisms of capitalists, and, and so I thought, well, I can like at least give my opinions on those things. So I said, and I was, and hey, if I don't debate these things, I don't discuss these uh, topics, then well, I probably wouldn't even, like, strengthen my position or something like that, or reaffirm my position, and well, it's my position anyway. So I wasn't like, oh, no, and so I, it didn't took me that much or that long to say, no, yeah, sure, I will discuss uh, capitalism with you, and the one with 1980 has also talked to Aspen Speak, so he has spoken highly of him. And so, uh, yeah, and so we did that earlier today. I had a lot of fun. My And I think the discussion was quite well. It wasn't on cap capitalism or center on capitalism generally so that's why i think he kind of like uh um kind of like discussing politics and then yeah we discussed a lot of politics on that uh, hangout so i thought it was a good hangout so that's why i and with his permission and he just really gave it i'm going to mirror it on my channel but i'm doing this little intro video first because there i have two complaints that you know, um not complaints, well, I guess complaints, but complaints of myself. I have two problems with myself during that uh, live stream. Two things I, I didn't like is when I normally, when I, as per the Bronx Brawler said, who talks politics while sober? And that was my problem during live stream. For the most part, I was sober. I had a drink earlier in the day, but I wasn't drinking during the live stream. And so I kind of regretted doing that. Uh, which is why I'm making up for it right now by drinking a bourbon sweet vermouth and Dr. Pepper drink. Uh, and also one thing I forgot to do on the live stream on air is what I've, I'm going to do, or as long as I remember to do so on each show, each and every one of my streams, show off my leggings on. So I'm going to show you off the leggings I was wearing today, early today, during the live stream. Batman comic book leggings. So there you go. Check it out. All right. Now enjoy uh, my discussion and conversation with S Man Speaks and uh, Lonely Wolf nineteen eighty. I'm um yeah myself, myself and the random geek. And yeah. I'm I'm Jonathan. And we're on air. Yeah. All right. I'll just call you Jonathan. So I am joined today with Jonathan of uh, Sun, Some Random Geek and Lonely Wolf 1980. We're going to have a bit of a conversation about uh, communism and capitalism, but I think it will be more specific because me and uh, Jonathan here do have a bit of a disagreement on the workers owning the means of production being a little more specific here because I was in a live chat, um, the live chat of a uh, debate, uh, Owen and uh, Ian Conway, and I said the workers do not deserve to own the means of production. You said you disagreed. Uh, and I thought we'd have a stream here so we don't spam anyone's live chat or comment section or Twitter feed. <laughs> so um, <laughs> um, I'll explain why I don't think the workers should own the means of production. Uh, simply put, um, I thought about it a lot. I, I actually almost became a communist over the summer, I'll admit, as embarrassing as that might be. I did think about it a lot. Uh, the reason I don't think they should is they, their job is only to do what they were hired for. Uh, it's whether they're capable of it or not. I didn't. I, I don't. All that. Um, like if sure they might be able to, um, but at the same time, I would 
I believe if the bosses, as a lot of people say, oh, they don't do anything, you have the perfect opportunity to get them to do something by making them handle uh, all the responsibility of uh, owning, uh, of the means of production, make them uh, do things if, if the bosses are as lazy as people portray them to be. And I don't think they're as lazy as they're incredibly lazy, and they should be grateful they uh, have uh, people doing the work for them. But that, uh, and I'll use this analogy. When I was younger, like 13 or something, I had a, uh, a little thing of where people would pay me to mo to maintain their property, like, you know, landscaping. They'd give me like five, ten bucks, sometimes as much as twenty. Uh, they were either too physically weak because of med medical problems or they're too old or they're just too lazy. Either way, it was uh, my gain, their loss. Uh, and I was pretty much the only one using uh, the lawnmower or whatever they would give me to perform that service. Do I deserve to own... Uh, I guess you could refer to those uh, tools as the uh, means of my... Oh my! I'm going to turn off the webcam, it's a bit laggy. But yeah, do I deserve to own their, uh, pro that property as the means of production, as it's what I'm using to produce the labor of... Uh, and that labor being to maintain uh, the appearance of their property? Uh, I guess I'll let you, because uh, I don't know if you are necessarily a communist or if you're like uh, Lonely Wolf, where you guys do take a bit of a, a left wing turn, economically speaking. Like, I, and, and bear in mind, I'm not a hardcore right wing capitalist. I'm actually center right, so I'm not very right wing. Go um, ahead. Um, well, the thing is, well, yeah, I, I don't know what I am either or something like that. I, I most, more or less just kind of criticize capitalism, or I see a lot of problems with it. And the problems I kind of see with capitalism kind of ties with like uh, my feminism, my third way, uh, feminism and stuff like that, where it's just like, uh, I have problems with like people going hungry or people starving. I believe, I, I personally believe in like a single payer healthcare system, like a public option that everyone gets to like uh, have healthcare as a right and stuff like that. And uh, I think in your example, also, that, this is a tangent actually, uh, you probably did own your own means of uh, production of labor and stuff like that with the tools and stuff like that. But uh, so I don't know, but uh, I'm more of critical critical of capitalism more than anything else. Then I don't know if I am a narco syndicalist or a narco communist and stuff like that. And that's why I kind of like when I've you first said, "Hey, let's have a debate." I was like, um, "I haven't read Karl Marx, so I don't think I can just like say yes, socialism is good for X, Y, and Z reasons." I just more of like yeah. uh, I, I, I'll I meant the discussion actually, like uh, right. exactly. yeah. Yeah, I felt like I should have come off with more of a discussion because debate it sounds a little more hardcore of a conversation than just a discussion. I mean, right? But then um, again, debate. And, yeah, debate. yeah. I mean, debates, and I did have a bit of a debate about today's the eighth. Okay, so almost a, almost eleven months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, hang on a second, I gotta be right back. I guess so. Uh, you two can shoot the shit for a second. Oh sure, I can totally do that. <clears throat> yeah, because we like that's that's what we do, like um, on a regular basis. <laughs> hey, you and S man just shoot the shit down occasionally, or just yeah, you yeah. Oh yeah, because we, um, we got a, we've got a whole group of um. There's a whole group of us that like regularly kind of the it's a cancer podcast, <laughs> and believe it, we are we are very we are cancerous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and now to, to be fair to S man is like that. Uh, you do come off as genuine, so that's kind of like part of my reason. I was like, you know, no, I, I no, yeah, I can, I should discuss like uh, this uh, thing with him because you do appear genuine in your uh, beliefs and your positions and stuff like that. So that was uh, that's why it's like even at first it was like, mm, I was like, no way, yeah, I should. And besides, by me discussing my ideas of like my criticism of capitalism as well as my ideas of socialism. Is would help me like uh, build my ideas for like these things or why I these your things. Yeah, it, like uh, for instance, uh, I, I asked Owen, uh, what, uh, "What do you think of your first few debates you had, like with War Corps and others?" And he said he felt like he did all right, but he feels like his strength, his, his reasoning for his positions have strengthened over time. And I feel like I feel the same way. Uh, my first debate actually was with him on feminism. Uh, and that was that was a that was a very long debate. And by the end of it, 
I felt like my reasoning had been somewhat strengthened in other areas. I felt like he did change my viewpoint on a few things. Um, but that's a whole different uh, topic for another time. But sure. um, Let's, we can keep it to the capitalism. Oh yeah. Okay. So with with uh, a lot of criticism, I I get people telling me about capitalism. The stronger reasons that made me cr self criticize and wonder maybe communism had a point or has a point uh, were the foreign policy of the United States, and I did look into it to see what they're because I wanted to get more specific with it. There is a provision mentioning the desire to prevent the spread of communism beside, uh, uh, to other nations, and, but they would not count those that are already under uh, communism. And before anyone says not true communism, that's what it says. That's not what I'm saying. Um, and the other one had to do with the environment. Um, now, I, I, I'm just going to bite the bullet. I, I do believe climate change is a thing. I've never been a climate change denier. But I, I'm not going to get into a whole tangent about climate change. Uh, but, and I really thought about it. This wasn't something that made, oh, I, I changed my mind in two seconds. I genuinely, for a long time, thought about the criticism or do I change my position. I mean, and then I, uh, within a few weeks, I felt like I had somewhat of an answer. At least I could acknowledge the criticism and say, all right, the environment, uh, it's the fact that people are not following the law. Uh, they're not following regulations. And this is going to make me sound like an authoritarian, which I promise you I'm not, is to uh, to have severe punishments for those that break that law. Mm -hmm. I, I remember seeing a documentary, actually, of uh, so if I can, I'm going to see if I can pull it up right now. Sure. But it was mentioning people who, amazing documentary, I actually I felt some, some faith in humanity return. It, I, it was something about... Uh, a bunch of people were going out into the ocean, right? And they were removing a bunch of trash uh, oh, they found yeah. in the ocean. They found a bunch of nets. They found some animals that were trapped to nets, and they were able to save a few. Uh, they found an island. It was called Garbage Island. I think that's maybe the title of it, but it was it was this island of garbage. Like, it was so huge. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Garbage Island, I think is what they called it. It's on Netflix. So oh, if anyone okay. got... Yeah, if anyone has Netflix and you want to watch it, I will put a link to this... Um, um, and there's even oh yeah, uh, there's even a, a website called Plastic Paradise. Um, there's a trip. Uh, I think that's what it's called. I'll yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to it. Uh, description of this stream and and I might even send it to you via the DM. Sure. Uh, and and while I know people say it's naive to think that um uh they, they would say it's naive because people already don't follow that rule. I'll I'll send the link for the trailer. Uh, but but I would simply argue that you just need to have a harsher punishment to penalize those that do it yeah and financially yeah. cripple them um and simply put like people constantly say to me whenever uh i used to get into arguments on whether or not the ussr was uh socialist or communist uh and they would say to me constantly they would say oh it communism is the workers owning or and socialism the workers are owning the means of production mm -hmm. and i could just simply say capitalism is where the workers privately own the means of production and and and, and things like that it, it's like i try not to use the definition as an argument unless i feel like it is vital or at least it can explain why i got the thing got the position i got mm -hmm. and i will i will not lie Ca capitalism is not perfect by any means i i think you have to be extremely dishonest to say it's been uh it's done it, it, it's been without any any issues or flaws uh right. and, uh, and uh, yeah go ahead I will say I, i've gone on yeah yeah i would say personally also that like uh socialism is not yeah, perfect socialism. either is is there a possible the problems in socialism problems. sure there's a possibility in problems in kindness and sure and i also don't know enough about like venezuela or ussr or china or north korea or any of those places that like are are said that they're communists if they're true communists or not and that's it's one thing to just like say i'm offended this but it's another thing to then it's just to to say just something of language that that's not feminist views and stuff like this is and i do agree with you that like uh if throughout the whole history of the united states especially in the cold war it will which is where we get like the red scare and we get this propaganda or this like paranoia in the united states of communism which is why we which is why i can understand 
America probably never is going to be like a socialist or communist state ever because of that deeply ingrained uh, spirit of like communism is the enemy, which thankfully for the yeah. millennium generation, when you think about it, the, we're, this is the first generation that doesn't have the red scare as part of their daily lives. Yeah. And so, if they, which is um, why, yeah. which is why the millennial generation is probably the one that's most likely to adopt uh, socialism and stuff like that, or at least socialism yeah. idea. I'm okay with like taking bits here from socialism while keeping some of the capitalism for the most part. Like a mixed so, yeah, economy. I, I guess the democratic socialist would be what I will call myself. Hmm. Uh, I've I think I might have a. Uh... Uh, yeah, I I've actually have a future stream planned with to talk about politics with a social, uh, secular hawk. Um, uh, yeah, I I um I know a few, I know a guy who's who's in favor of a mixed economy like that, and he's quite left wing and quite libertarian. Um, and I do like the idea of uh, it's it's like I don't believe that we should fear an ideology. I mean, there's a few ideologies I get why some people have a fear of, like Nazism, uh, fascism, white supremacy, yeah. yeah, fascism, and and people take this attitude. Some I know a few people who think fascism is exclusively right wing, which I believe, yeah, fascism is right wing authoritarianism. But I, I but I it, it doesn't by definition it does not specifically say. Oh, it's 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 just exclusively right wing. I believe Stalin was very much authoritarian left wing, um, and I I believe um, it, well, let's just take the political compass. You know, the, the kind you go with the political political compass test. There's ten spaces uh, for the authoritarian and uh, the libertarian side, and then for the left and the right. I believe once you get past six spaces on the authoritarian side, I believe you're heading towards fascism. Just like how if you're uh, past six spaces on the libertarian side, I, I believe you're heading towards anarchism. Uh, if you're same thing with cap with being like neoliberal or a collectivist, mm -hmm. and going back to what you said about uh, the uh, the red scare, I, I do like the idea that we we uh, try and at least if we're going to fear an ideology like. With several ideologies, it's really easy to explain why we're afraid of it. For instance, Nazism, what it did uh, during the Jewish Holocaust and World War II in general. That was a very bloody yeah. war. That's fairly obvious to explain. And anyone who's a, a uh, there's a few, and, and, and um, I know this might sound like a tangent, but there's a few things I will never debate or discuss. The Holocaust happened. Like, I will never debate a Holocaust denier. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds a bit closed-minded, but whatever. Yeah. As for, go, and, and and about, th there are people I've met, believe it or not, who think that America has a bit some tendency of socialism in it. There are some who believe Obama was a socialist and was on the authoritarian left. I actually found a few political compass charts as I was digging through their site saying he was on the authoritarian right with Hillary Clinton, George W. Bush, several well-known uh, uh, political figures in the United States. Um, I don't think the United States will ever really head to communism or socialism. Um, and I'll actually get into that about the foreign policy argument I hear a lot of people on the hard left use, as I can get why they say that. I'm not going to deny that the United States may have as it, it may have attacked other nations to prevent them from going to communism. And I would, I guess, you if you want to pin me as a non-interventionist, you can go ahead. As if you if if uh, if the if the country of Lonely Wolf decides we're going to head towards communism or socialism, if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to stop you. I honestly, um, I, I honestly think, I, that, the I think, think that the United States that they would, would actually, actually get involved in like another like country and take it over, over or for its resources, for its resources. Like oil and mm, stuff like, like that, stuff or like that. they want to trade mm -hmm. that country. Trade and if they don't want to trade, that's where they'll come in with military or an espionage or with CIA kind of stuff, and or just not even come in themselves, but fund another like organization that will just like take over the uh, government and then in, in say in state themselves, like a military coup d'état or something like that. They did that a lot in South America, but from what I've been told. Yeah. It was, and a lot of people, yeah, I've gotten a lot of, uh, I got, I've, t I've had a number of conversations with communists who say, um, they talk about Pinochet, uh, 
uh, who is who is kind of the term death flights or free helicopter rides for commies have become a thing. I used to joke about that all the time, but I I wanted to know about the origin of it, and I've stopped making that joke since since people have been murdered by being thrown out of, out of helicopters. It's like I don't tell jokes about people being put in gas chambers because that same reason people actually died. Um, and to address the foreign policy argument, I if if I were the president of the United States, I would I would simply leave those nations alone. Now people bring up how the United States has put embargoes or coups on other nations when it comes to the embargo or when they simply just do not trade to that nation, I believe the United States has every right to say, okay, they're heading towards a policy or a type of way of running their country we don't personally, we don't agree with. We're not going to do business with them if that's where they're going to go. Um, yeah. It reminds me of this uh, private property, if you want to call it a debate I had literally yesterday with a guy who's a, who I, I'm in favor of a business deciding who they want to serve and who they don't want to serve as that's, I believe that's their right. And yes, I do agree yeah. with that. Oh, yeah. Point. Yeah, I'm very much in Like, I, I believe that business has the right to do so. Um, he did agree with me on a few contexts of it. Uh, and I guess I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, I, I believe this, it, 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 the same applies to the United States and to other things, other contexts. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so, William Wolf, do you have an explanation? Uh, do you have any have input it? on this? <laughs> Yeah, it's um, I, th I think I'm on the same side as you because I'm I consider myself libertarian, libertarian left in a lot of ways. Um, like I, the reason I call myself a centrist is probably because um, like I'm I'm closer to the center on that on that part of the quadrant. Um, so it's probably because there's a combination of views. So it's not necessarily that I'm straddling the fence on every particular issue. It just means that right. you know my take on different issues will fall under the left and right wing of policy. So. You know, um, economically, I can be more on the left, and there's also progressive values, or I guess libertarian type things like, um, you know, I'm sort of pro-abortion, pro, um, yeah, you know, marijuana, etc. But then, also, you know, there's a number of conservative points I'll take. So, you know, um, I'm sort of like pro the death penalty or any sort of harsher punishments or whatever. Um, yeah. When it comes um, to economics, it's kind of a spe I see it as sort of a spectrum. So I think that some people are very they hold on very tight, saying it's either communism or it's or it's evil. Like it's kind of like a binary yeah. situation. Whereas I sort of consider it more of a spectrum. So on the extreme, mm -hmm. on the extreme, um, kind of you know neoliberal neoliberalism side, it's exclusively like a market driven economy. Like there's no um, sort of intervention. So. I sort of lean more towards the mixed economy, um, just moving a bit for, like further away from the market economy and just more towards the... Because um, I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is, you know, how much does the, the price mechanism, which is the, I guess, the, the big tenet of economics that we, that we study with supply and demand, like how much do we have faith in that, um, that, that particular, yeah. you know, that the market forces will deliver the best outcomes for everybody? And there's just so many practices that happened that, that kind of undermine the idea of a free market. So, for example, there's the formation of, you know, monopolies, et cetera. So you got um, mm. that hegemony, like things such as Walmart. And then there's also the practice of, um, like, if people pursue the profit, you know, um, I'm sort of cynical of that idea of the trickle down of wealth from um, <laughs> yeah. people who are um, like that because it trickles into different directions, not necessarily down. Um, no. So, for example, like the... Um, taking businesses offshore so you can exploit sort of cheaper labor and bypass laws or whatever, you know, that's yeah. like, um, that's what happened. So I sort of think there's a lot of regulation that needs to happen. And it was kind of, it's kind of ironic that, you know, um, it's kind of like capital, like some people who are pro capitalist, it's like when it suits them, but then when they start bitching and moaning about the free market, um, so for example, like a lot of millennials get, um, targeted, they get blamed for so many problems. They say, you know, when a business fails, it's like, oh, millennials like aren't buying our products. Like, you know, these millennials are like, <laughs> they're not buying the radio songs. Business. They're not buying yeah. radio songs. Like, well, okay, I'm sorry, but this is what you you chose. This like you have so much faith in this system. This is free choice, and yeah. so yeah. you know, it's fucked you in the ass. So you don't have a right to sit here complaining about something that you've openly, you know, advocated for. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can agree. I can I, I agree with with that what you said there. Um, politically on the on the spectrum, uh, uh, for those that don't know, I am a center right on the liber on the libertarian right. I was much more of a centrist uh, when I was a on the center left back earlier this year. Um, 
and now I'm like almost where I was libertarian, authoritarian wise, but I'm a bit more right wing now. Um, simply put, I I can get I can understand where they come from on the critique of capitalism, um, but I I do yeah I'm not like a neoliberal or anything. I I yeah. mean I, I I think I might have a future discussion with with humane mind on the idea of whether or not to privatize education uh, or the post office. Uh, our, ma our mail is somewhat privatized depending on what it is, uh, like UPS, Amazon. So I don't see the problem uh, with ex if you were to extend it to all mail. Um, I mean, but I can, but I, I, I've not heard really arguments against that idea, but I, I mean, I'm willing to entertain them. Um, the reason I even got into the topic of capitalism and communism is because it's obviously uh, it's the way we run the world. Uh, simply put, whether the workers own the means of production or not is going to um, cause a bit of controversy. Um, simply put, I, I think I even proposed the. Uh, I just lost my train of thought, but uh, I don't. I, I know Lonely Wolf is uh, quite left wing compared to me. Uh, I'm a, I'm more libertarian than he is. He's like I think three grid spaces libertarian, like in the libertarian side, and I'm like maybe three and a half. I don't know where I, I, I'm going to assume you're probably on the libertarian left. Uh, I mean, I haven't taken the, the, the political compass test yet, but I would guess it'll be like definitely on the libertarian side over the authoritarian side, definitely not super libertarian because, well, yeah, well, while absolute freedom in, in theory is great, we, there I have I, I'm not absolute on like anything. I'm not absolute for free speech because in order for someone one person to have absolute free speech, is other people's free speech must be not important in order for one person to have free speech. You know, um, in terms of freedom from consequences, stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. but, but left wing, I, I think I've gotten more left wing since I discovered the like feminist YouTube community and stuff like that. So, in the past two years, yeah. so I think I'll be like I somewhere in the left, uh, lower left hand quadrant of that compass test. Yeah, uh, and the eight values quiz I took it and it put me under liberalism, which. This this I get really annoyed with when uh, if if you tell some if someone uh, tell if you tell someone you're a liberal they're gonna think you're some dirty hippie who's who has to be like a left wing authoritarian which I've been called a dirty hippie before <laughs> I I've been called that because I take a liberal stance on abortion and same sex marriage and I've been called I've been called an authoritarian right winger because of my stance on affirmative action and my stance on guns and immigration. Um, and I will acknowledge, uh, and and if you tell someone you're a conservative, they're thinking you're some all right type, an, an all part of the alt right, which that just gets into a major headache. And I just stop talking with those people because they're just yeah. going to automatically assume that, like, if they have evidence to show this is something the alt right believes, like, uh, oh, it, like if you're a race realist, that's some kind of alt rightish type thing. So yeah, I would, I think it's pseudoscience garbage. Um, I had a thought in my head that I was going to uh, present, but I just I just drew a mind blank um, as we were just just talking about uh, where uh, we are on the left. Um, yeah, because I don't I was... think it's necessarily evil to. I don't think it's necessarily bad to hold, you know, a left wing view and then hold a. Yeah. Um, because that, that's that's sometimes what I can um, like when I'm discussing issues or whatever, and or if I'm trying to convince people. Like sometimes I treat it as like a double edge. Like, um, I use both ends, so there's a conservative part of me that will do things. So, for example, if it was like, let's say that there's a progressive thing, like we wanted to get more women to enroll in STEM sort of subjects so that they can, you know, shrink down the, the average earnings gap. And so yeah. the progressive, like the idea of being progressive would be, you know, there's like scholarships and things like that and like to visit schools and encourage girls or whatever um, to, to go into the sciences, etc. But then if you wanted to take a conservative approach to get the same outcome, you know, you could appeal to um, to women who are more conservative. So it could be a slogan like, you know, um, you don't have to say it explicitly, but appeal to patriotism, saying that, you know, by joining the STEM and the science, you're, um, you know, do it, um, for you're, your you're, country. You're, do it for your country. Yeah. So um, study the sciences because, you know, it's your duty as an American to develop the cure for cancer or to go on like space missions or whatever. Um, yeah, so okay, it, no, it's a patriotic no, no. appeal. Now what's playing in my head is those scenes from like Starship Troopers. Do you want to know more? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, and so sometimes we can take the same issue and we can get the same outcome by using both you know, something that comes from a yeah. progressive and some and something that comes from a conservative viewpoint as well. Yeah. Oh, I, I just realized what I was going to say. All right. Yeah. You, you mentioned something about feminism. Uh, 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 I just forgot your name. So, uh, uh, or some random okay. Geek. I'll call you Jonathan. I, I just, I just, I've been drawing mind blanks all day. I, I've been very tired today. Um, okay. Me and Lonely Wolf actually had a stream where we discussed like men's rights activism gender spectrum and binary, that type of thing. Uh, it was a very fun stream. Uh, like, for about an hour or two, it was me and him, and then we had others join. It was very fun. We, we, did, get a, we did cover a lot of ground. Um, and I, I would say, like, I understand why people are hesitant to use labels. I get that. But if, if you're trying to ask me what my position is on something, or you're, like, wondering where I am politically, I mean... If you want to say I'm liberal leaning in certain areas and conservative leaning in others, that's fine. Uh, when it comes to like political parties, I used to say independent, but there's some people that like there's the American Independent Party, which is apparently a right wing and far right wing party. So I have to separate myself from that. Um, I do consider myself a libertarian uh, on the on the right. So, but um, I will say this: I'm not uh, I'm not the type of person that believes the. Uh, I'm not one that would argue for the privatization of uh, um, schools. I mean, I, I, I've actually, I can get where people get that idea from, but I'm not, I have not read up on that enough to argue for or against it. Yeah. Uh, and it feels like whenever anyone argues that, they, people are so quick to straw man. Whether you, like whatever position you hold, they're just so quick to straw man. For instance, if uh, Lonely Wolf was a left wing Democrat. Oh, he 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 has to be a communist, or if he's a a, a bit of a right wing Democrat, same thing. Uh, people assume Obama was on the left because of Obamacare and other things. Where it's like, I'm not convinced that automatically means he's on the left. Um, I agree. Yeah, I, I think he's quite right wing for his drone strikes. Um, yeah. So jeez. God, like eight, I think it was what eight or nine out of ten that he even, he even that joked happened. about it at one of his dinners. If you date one of my daughters, I got just two word for you: predator drones. And it's like, oh god, that's a whole another discussion as well as how the Democrats since uh, Bill Clinton in the nineties uh, brought the third ring of Democrats brought essentially the Democrats to like closer to the center. So that I, I never realized this until I started watching like. Garrett's old channel, rest in peace, Garrett's channal, uh, where he he discussed with developed opinion Tim Blake about American politics, and they point out how even the, the Democrats since Bill Clinton are just centrist or right leaning, not so much progressive. The last progressive president was Jimmy Carter and stuff like that, and that mm -hmm. made me realize, oh right, I mean like in the 2000 election, uh, Bill Clinton and George W. Bush, the SNL sketch of one of their debates was like they both agree. And so it's like, okay, the guy you like to have a beer with, George W., or the boring guy who invented the internet. Who do you vote for? Who knows? Yeah, and the, and the 2000 election was a mess. Um, it, it was a mess in the sense of who was going to win. And ever since then, people have been arguing, especially even, even the last election, on whether or not we get rid of the Electoral College, which I personally have no problem with. It yeah. created a whole shit show. And I knew when December 19th hit that we it was still going to be Trump. I... I was yeah. surprised about the uh, faithless electors from my state, Washington State, that did not vote for Hillary. It's like, I, I see she's not as well liked. I, I voted for Hillary, though, because if, I think, tactical voting. Yeah. Tactical voting. Yeah. I, yeah. I voted, I would, I would have voted libertarian or independent. I, I, I was, sadly, I'm not of the age to vote. I personally think that should be changed. In fact, I, I personally think criminals should be allowed to vote as I don't think you're harming anyone by voting. I um, agree with that, yeah. Yeah, like even, even like I've always found that to be disagreeable. I used to be very much in favor of, um, of, of, of authority, I wouldn't say authoritarian type of punishment, but I, I, I believe that's where I stood. I used to think, oh, we got to have punishment over rehabilitation. But uh, I, I think you can make a connection between harsh punishment without rehabilitation uh, and recidivism rates. I mean, the incarceration rate of the United States is one of the highest in the world. 
you know? not only because of the drug war and other things that that, that have caused a lot of problems. So mm-hmm. I, I can agree with a lot of people. I do believe I take a bit of a left-leaning lean, turn on the drug war as we've spent a trillion dollars since then and we spent $51 billion annually to keep it going. We've had seven presidents exit the White House, enter and exit the White House, and we have uh, Donald Trump, who was, like, I think the eighth president since it started. Yeah, It's been an absolute mess. It's caused a, lo- a whole lot of problems. It's delivered very few of its uh, promises, and uh, it's eroding our Fourth Amendment rights, and uh, it, it's it's an absolute joke. I Even with states, yeah. even, even with, like, some states slowly, slowly, like Massachusetts in the last election, my state in Colorado already had marijuana legally, something like that. It was kind of like, wait a minute, it's still kind of federally illegal but yet the states are going to legalize it so how can it happen and it turns out that the federal government kind of just like the states were just like waiting and seeing it, it will the federal government shut us down because they have power over the states and stuff like that and in this case thankfully since because it's been over well over a year now that washington state's been legal to like smoke or marijuana it's the case where the federal government just like decided on that case not to care. And so slowly but surely more states I think are going to legalize marijuana. But even though with those federal laws, you have the problem of if, if you own a marijuana shop, you have to do everything. And your employees buy and sell the product, do the, all the transactions for the product to, uh, to your store and to the customer with cash. It's cash only because no banks want to deal with uh, – accepting business from a marijuana shop because yeah. of federal regulations. And that's where it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, I used to be very much against the idea of legalizing marijuana. And then I realized, wait a minute, it's not affecting me. Like th- this is where a lot of my positions changed when I realized it didn't affect me. Mm-hmm. I've never been against same sex marriage. I believe the government should not have been involved in marriage. I, I've, and when when they started legalizing marijuana, I always I, I remember hearing that you know the government, um, the federal government, out, it basically quashes state governments on that front. Um, I think that if we were to abolish, first of all, if we get rid of, the, if we end the drug war, we're going to save. Uh, I believe it was, the estimates were about forty nine. It was between forty five and fifty billion, I believe, annually. And I. And if we were to tax marijuana like we do with uh, tobacco and alcohol, uh, we we would save, I think, around uh, that same number. So we'd be we'd be saving about a hundred billion annually with, with money, and we could put that into minimizing the national debt, which is at twenty trillion. That's and, it's I, gonna go, and that's going to grow larger with the tax bill that uh, yeah that tax. party. Uh, I am. I do consider myself a libertarian. I I think the tax the the in minimum minimal uh, national debt and max. Especially, I love the social the social message. So whether you're a left or right libertarian, the social the social message of maximizing uh, political freedom and autonomy and self ownership. I agree with a whole lot. Um, because under like totalitarian. Uh, uh, dictatorships uh I, i'm gonna let everyone that doesn't know about that in a little secret that you your rights are not guaranteed yeah your free speech is non-existent any other right is out the window so people i've heard some people argue housing is a right in north korea i, I remember a socialist was arguing that um i would rather not have that right if my other rights aren't guaranteed like your entire family will be moved to a prison like I, I think they call it um, what, what's it called where they remove the entire family from the uh, from the the population and they put them all in prison for the bad action of one person. It's incredibly uh, terrifying. That's why I'm so grateful to only uh, I, I'm so grateful to live only in the United States. Uh, I cannot imagine. Uh, what people go through in North Korea. That's why I'm always thankful uh, to... While I'm not going to say the United States is perfect, it's nice to know that at the very least our free speech is a thing. Like I don't know of any other nation on Earth that has uh, it protected so strongly under the Constitution. Um, I know Australia, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not guaranteed, but it is implied from what yeah, I read that's, of it. That's, that's correct. Yeah, it's an implied freedom of speech. 
Uh, speaking of Australia, congratulations on that parliament passing the gay marriage. I oh, know it's. I can't. I, I agree because I want to. Um, like, it's going to be awesome to do because I'd love to do like a um to pitch like I could make money by pitching like reality TV shows to America. So like the Fox <laughs> Network. So it's like um, thinking about them. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a reality show about like gay divorce court? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's been a while since I watched cable. I wonder if Bravo has actually like like the gay divorce court and something like that. And why hasn't that happened? But, no, I mean that's I mean that's yeah. Why don't I like I should write to them and say, look, this is my idea. So like um, you know, you can credit me the, as a creator and then like hand me over some royalties and go with it. <laughs> it'd just be like a true capitalist. You do one thing. Be, you get... Yeah, it'd be Bravo. I think it'd be Bravo to you. I reckon like Andy Cohen would do something like that because he does like because. Because he was a genius. Because I'm kind of, I do have a guilty pleasure for the Real Housewives. Like I've just watched like, I watched a few episodes of the New Jersey ones last night, and it was like holy shit. Like, and I think because we talk about toxic masculinity and like the gender, it's like maybe this toxic femininity, like um, it might be a thing. And I think the best citation for that would have to be the Real Housewives. <laughs> I think that'll be. The Lonely Wolf, yeah. there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure because you should not be guilty for what you dri you're driving pressure thumbs as long as you're not hurting others or something. So that's why we should use the term great trash because we can't just examine great, great trash, art yeah. without also examining great trash. Yes. So that's, that's another why thing that, um, yeah, because that's another thing that I kind of, um, when I discuss sort of critiques of capitalism or where I take a Marxist view, and that comes to um, with entertainment, etc. It's um, I take yeah. it, it's it's yeah. almost a similar view of Marxism when I think about the the collective kind of um, I guess the collective ownership of culture means itself. Production. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so not the, not so much the means of production, but the intellectual um, things about art. So the discourse, the mm -hmm. discourse and the conversation about art and the knowledge of art and everything like that, and literature itself is is something that um, that we sort of collectively own and. The problem is, um, because of the it's a very elitist type system, especially with the art galleries, like the oh yeah, such an elite system where you got this really crappy art that's kind of this expression, this you know this pretend kind of avant garde type art. Like yeah, these really ridiculous statements that are made that have a, absolutely no discernible talent whatsoever. But because these you know elitists at the top, because they're speaking in this language, and and even they're not convinced what they're talking about is real. They're just bullshitting. With this language mm -hmm. and so part of that um that i guess the class revolution of that is that you know we sort of have to educate ourselves so on the i guess the history of art and we should also be aware of just the language of art so we can express the language of appreciation so we can promote the artists that that are genuinely so that would be very popular that that is good art yeah uh, sort of um, standard yeah, uh, there was actually a question on the political compass test that asked if the business of like the, if if the if the artist is is less important than the manager and things like that. I would strongly disagree. I think they are equally important because yeah, I think it's harder to get by if you're a, if you have no manager. Um, it's 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 difficult, but you, I guess you can pull that off. But it'd be easier to have a manager. But I think it'd be it'd be impossible to to make it without someone to manage. Um, and in, in this current yeah. system, I agree with that. Yes. As for uh, as for t uh, the means of production, I when they say oh, it should not be privately owned, I think it's still technically privately owned. Uh, and this is how I interpret it. If it's just the workers, like obviously it's less private if it's the workers. But um, but I I do believe that. Uh, I mean, I can get why they say that. Like why they want the means of production privately owned, as it's. The workers doing the work, but it's but the the CEOs and the bosses do work as well. I think they sort out like eighty thousand pages of regulations, which is insane. Um, and and they they do hire legal teams to go through it because because I mean all those pages, it's like you that I cannot imagine that like running my own business and having those eighty thousand pages. I know that might be a bit of an ANCAP talking point, but I do get where they come from there. Now I'm not an ANCAP. I almost did become one. Really early on this year, as I would, I wanted to know more about capitalism, and I stumbled across anarcho-capitalism, and that was a, that was a whole journey of of seeing uh, statists, as they're called. And I mean, 
If you want to call me that, then uh, I guess I'm an e evil, filthy statist. I, I guess minarchist is a better term, but um, I guess I can somewhat get where they come from on privatizing education, but I'd have to look into that further again. Um, yeah. Yeah, but um, and, and the private property and personal property points that are brought up, and I think this is... I mean, I, I've heard and, and comms do it as talk about them, but mostly comms uh, and and comms with private property and personal property or libertarian socialists do as well. Uh, when, we, when, when I hear private property, I think about my home where I live. Um, this computer I consider my private property. The microphone with these earbuds, private property. I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable for people to assume you're talking about like their home or something when we think of private property. Um, I mean, I don't mind you using the term personal property as I think that's also an adequate term. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also believe that it, there's nothing wrong with uh, defending private property rights. Um, I, I've, I've seen people go on tangents about how it's oppressive. Um, and simply put, I, I do believe you have the option of who you work for and who you don't. Um, and I know I sound like I'm going on tangents, but... Like, you, you guys ever heard of the term wage slavery, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I think, personally, I believe that is an oxymoron as slavery. Uh, they, they keep you... Um, you don't get paid, and you are pretty much just kept... Uh, they, they pretty much keep you hostage. It, it's like you're held hostage, and you're not paid. If they are paying you, I don't buy that it is slavery. And you also go home every day. Slaves you, do not have the option to go. Go ahead. Well, the thing is, like, the part of the reason why it's called slave service is not that you're a slave to the person who's paying your wage. You are a slave to the system because if you, in under capitalism, under under our current global system of capitalism, neoliberal uh, capitalism specifically, that if you do not work, then you do not have money to pay rent or, or money to buy food or money to pay for health care or something like that. Or, in fact, like... It's, it's, most people get their health care through a job, so you need a job to get health care and stuff like that. And on, on to the private property thing and stuff like that, it's one thing for your home, I say, it's like personal property, and like my computer, like my microphone, like all my stuff, that's yeah. personal property, stuff like that. But land, why is land private property, and why is it privately owned, and why is it that like the apartment management that I live with owns the land and stuff like that, and just by by only the land can then rent it out and then be a land and landlord and stuff like that. They are how are they contributing to the economy by just owning land? All they do is like okay, maybe they manage that, but you can easily pay plumbers, you can easily pay electricians, you can easily just pay uh, all those people to work on the maintain the things. It's kind of implied that the landowners would do that and to keep up the maintenance of the apartments or their homes and stuff like that. But yet, still for the most part, all they do is just own the land and because they just own something, they own capital, they'll get more money and stuff like that. And so that's part of the criticism that I do agree with that why do we need landlords uh, it's, and in general um, it's a concept. But also I back guess to I the but back to the oh, late, go ahead. Go ahead. back to the late slavery and something like that. You're just a slave not to the bosses you work for, but to the system. Because if you don't work, you don't live. And, or, and so, mm. yeah, you can choose to be homeless and stuff like that. But what kind of choice is that? And so that's where mm. that's where the idea of slave wage slaves comes from. It's not that you're a slave to mm -hmm. the boss; you're a slave to the system. All right. Uh, I guess an answer to what you initially said about uh, whether you work or starve, I believe that is, I, and I know this can make me sound a bit, uh, a bit uh, uh, ja jaded. I was about to say jagged, jaded uh, when I say this. I have no personal problem with the idea of working or starving. For instance, and I know this might be a bit of an, 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 an a weird analogy. If I, when I was younger, if I refused to do chores, um, uh, they, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to do what I wanted. So be the incentive uh, to get that chore done with, even if I didn't like it. For instance, if you, if the dog were to make a mess, uh, were to uh, take a shit on the carpet, as it, and while I find it disgusting, the incentive is uh, if you don't clean that up, you're not you can't go you can't hang out with your friends. 
all right, I'll just uh, take a deep breath of air uh, and clean it up and then uh, try not to think about that after. Um, and simply put, I do believe that uh, it could be an, an interesting factor to, if you're not going to work, uh, that if you, if you have the opportunity to work, but you refuse to take the opportunity, then I don't believe you should be given society support. Um, and I understand why some people think that's really harsh, but I, I do believe that it's not, a, it, it's not as harsh as, uh, you know, I do believe nothing is truly free in the world. Uh, and the only thing we, we are free with is our speech. Other than that, uh, and our right to privacy. Other than that, I think it's uh, not necessarily all that guaranteed. As for the why we should have landlords, it's I view it as much more of a convenience to have a landlord rather than own the home yourself. Because if you own the home yourself, and something like your dishwasher or your 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 air conditioner breaks, the it, they'll just call up the landlord and they'll have somebody fix it. Um, or they might come down and fix it themselves, depending on uh, if that's what they're going to do, however they want to do it. When it comes to owning your own home, you have to either get uh, hire someone to, to fix it or Google it and fix it yourself. I actually have seen people fix their own dishwashers just because they Googled it and they found out what to do. Um, and certain apartment complexes, uh, yeah, they, 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 have, they have people actually go out and maintain the property. Um, I personally wouldn't mind if I, if I had a job where I'm just maintaining a car apartment complexes. I mean, sure, sometimes there's, like, you know, clean the gutters, mow the lawns, and trim the bushes. I've seen all sorts of apartment complexes, if, whether they have a pool or not. Probably would be better if they didn't have a pool, but a job is a job. Uh, I know I said a bit there, so if you want to respond or however well, you want to, yeah. Yeah, I do want to respond, I think, and, that, and that's where it's like, I can understand in your position of, like, you just got to, like, work to get paid to live and stuff like that, and that way, by working, you are contributing to society, and that contributing to society in general is something I do uh, feel is important and stuff like that. Uh, but for me, which is why I have some socialist leanings and stuff like that, it's great for the people that have the opportunity to work to be able to work and stuff like that. And also, I, for a year and a half, I didn't have a job, and it was, and, and I didn't do anything with that time other than maybe playing poker and then playing video games and stuff like that. And so I, and or and I wasn't like seeking relationships or anything like that, or even had much of, in terms of friendships. And so for me, I was kind of like, as a man, uh, it was kind of. Dep it was you know, I was a bit of a state of depression. Not sure it was clinical depression. Probably wasn't, but it was a state of depression for like I wasn't doing much to contribute to society or wasn't doing something to say this is what I do and stuff like that. Um, so I can it definitely for people who have the opportunity to work. I think and there is there's nothing wrong with the idea of doing something for society to contribute to society. Definitely, uh, but there I would I'm looking at I'm focused on the people that can't work or have difficulty finding work or difficulty finding a job in like their area that they live or in their, their situation, their situation of poverty, their situation of disability, their situation of being nearly typical and stuff like that, or even their situation of their race and the systemic racism that like is oppressing them and stuff like that. I do believe those things are, are real. And so that's why I say, the, what about those people? Which is why, even though, like, with the idea, people hate the idea of giving out handouts, which is why they say if you want healthcare or any of these things, they should get a job. These people that say that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm actually, I'm actually personally willing to uh, be live in a society where everyone has the right to healthcare, to social, to housing. And to a unconditional base income, and I don't mind if some people take that as like, "What? I get all this for free for nothing? Thank you!" and just go off and drink beer and smoke cigarettes and do nothing and go to whorehouses or stuff like that, or no, go to prostitutes and stuff like that, or it's negative connotation. I apologize for that. I said male feminist. Um, all right. Really um yeah, I'm willing to like have people live off the system if it means that people who can't work able to live as well. I'd rather not let people um, die, which is yeah, my position. 
I get where you come from there. Um, I, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't Canada have so so? You're favorite like socialized healthcare, correct? Yes, I am. Oh, and I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. You're in Washington State, so you're not. I, I thought you were Canadian for a sec. Uh, I think Canada has socialized health care, and they don't seem to be they doing do. too bad. And our and um and obviously we do not have a socialized health care system. I mean, I would not have a problem with it. Um, I know some people might be if there were, we only have one viewer, but if there if we had like a whole ton of people, we the chat would be screeching, "Oh my god!" You know, I get where you come from. I I can absolutely get where you're coming from. On the factor of, of um, especially like if, if the person is unable to find work but they want to work, especially that, I absolutely get where you come from. Like I, I do believe that is a that is a good point. Uh, and you mentioned clinical depression, which I just wanted to go back to that and just clinical depression. I thought it was I think, um, two weeks of low mood, uh. Yeah, it, 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 clinical depression is a mental disorder characterized by two, at least two weeks of low mood that is present across most situations. So yeah, um, I did kind of uh, struggle with something uh, similar to that uh, myself, and um, uh, fortunately, I've not. I made that a New Year's resolution to uh, keep myself upbeat, cheery, and things like that. And I hope you both are doing uh, okay in your respective uh, uh, living situations. Um, you know, and going back to what you said about um, the people, uh, I would say when it comes to those that uh, I would simply uh, help them attempt to find jobs. Like I, I'm not trying to straw man or anything. Uh, like if if the, if they get things for free, I would encourage them. Even though I wouldn't force them at like gunpoint, I would of course encourage them as much as possible to. I'm not looking at my Twitter feed again. <laughs> um, to as much as possible to try and find work. Uh, people, I know people have argued. Oh, uh, it, when people say, "Oh, you got to get a job," well, uh, you need an education for that or something, or and, and to get an, a good education, or, or you need to pay for it. And you need to get a job or something like that. I'm not. I, I'm not trying to. I'm trying to paraphrase as best as I can. Um, let me try because I, I, I remember hearing this argument, and I remember uh, there's a coffee shop, you know, Starbucks that they, they have this scholarship thing. Uh, last I checked, um, it, yeah, they have they have a college plan, uh, and I don't believe it's very difficult to work at some like Starbucks. I mean, I so I would encourage them to find jobs like that. Uh, and, and and there's other jobs where to get ex where you get experience in the workplace like restaurants like fast food places and things like that so I, I can get where you come from uh, but I, if I were to take your ideas I would tweak them in the area of yeah let's of course help those that are unemployed but but motivate them and help them get well I'm not I'm not saying you you're not for that just uh, I would include the idea of let's help them find work you know. And encourage them as much as possible to pursue that uh, area to to uh, look for work and and things like that. Uh, and and I believe uh, to go back to what you said about uh, and I'll say this for quotes whorehouses. I think it's it's not. A, I don't find a personal problem with you using that term. I mean, I'm not a feminist, but what I mean, I'd rather call myself an egalitarian. I would simply say, I believe any if you want to say any word, I believe that's fine. As if we, and this is a bit of a tangent, but if we if we start to make it, if we try to make words unacceptable to say, you're going to only create the Streisand effect when you try to prevent those words from being said, like racial slurs, like the N word. Well, I don't personally agree with using it on towards anybody. I'm not going to penalize you for doing so because it's going to probably only encourage you to do it more. Oh, uh, so if you want to, um, if you want to, uh, if you want to respond to that, and you can mirror this if you sure. want to. If you oh, would yeah. like to. Yes. Uh, well, uh, well, it, it, well, the thing is, what I do have, if on terms of like words of use and stuff like that, I don't agree with the it, it, mm -hmm. with the idea that it's just words. No, because like even though there's like my context of what I use the word for, or something like that, I, I cannot control what mm -hmm. how someone else 
takes the word or something like that. I've been in arguments with my coworkers. In fact, it's like, no, listen to the words I'm saying and stuff like that. But that, yeah, you, the, your words may mean something to you, but it means something, means something different to me. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm personally just aware of like how my words can mean to something, which is why I, I personally just regret in that moment using the term whorehouse because sex work is legitimate work in this country is illegal and i think that's stupid because yeah. you probably agree with that there should be no such thing as victimless okay. crimes and so absolutely i can take your stance on that uh for instance pornography is legal for people to view as long as you're 18 or older in the united mm -hmm. states and that's a form of sex work when you think about it so technically yes. that form of sex work is legal but take away the cameras and the and the cast and the, that all that jazz then it's illegal. I find that to be a, a huge hypocrisy, and I strongly agree with you there. I think victimless crimes are. I, I think if we if we were to pardon those for nonviolent victimless crimes, I think we could probably knock out a huge chunk of the prison population uh, that ended up happening under the war on drugs, beginning by President Nixon. Which, uh, which continue? yeah, which was and the war on drugs. And uh, Nixon kind of said, and like from what I've heard from just in back room in, in conversations, Nixon did that specifically to just jail the darkies and stuff like that. And with the eighty nine percent of the prison incarceration being black and Latino uh, men or black and Latino people, you kind of just see that the war on drugs had the racial connotation to it and stuff like that. And yeah, I agree yeah. with there. And being allowed to having prisoners to vote, you get a lot more black voters as well, or people of colored voters. And so that's where, and I'm totally in for uh, in no voter suppression whatsoever. Just make it easy, just like, it doesn't matter. I say, if you're 18, here you go, here's your voter registration card, that's all you need to vote, and which was changed the way we vote like in Washington State, mail in ballots, it's all mail in so that anyone can vote. You can you get it two weeks in the head, so you can just take your time to vote. You can then put in the mail or then put into the ballot mm -hmm. boxes all over the place and stuff like that. I think yeah. like just in general, just across the country in many different places that election reform should be like a priority and something like that. Uh, but I'm going off yeah. the tension there, and so we're oh, that, we talk about no, that. Uh, I strongly agree with what you said there, actually. And to address that, I strongly in favor of abolishing the electoral college. It's outdated, and it's outlived its purpose. And I, I don't think its concerns uh, are relevant today in, in our society. Um, I personally wouldn't mind uh, whether you use your driver's license or whatever, or uh, a, 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 like your your worker if you have a, if you have a job like use that ID I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, so also yeah, with the, um, also yeah. with the electoral college and something like that. Some people who criticize like abolishing the electoral college, oh, they'll mean that the people in the big cities they're going to vote for the president each and every time. Ah, oh, matching for doors, huh? I'm not going to bring it up. I'm with that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'll change my fedora too into a quite similar pinstripe fedora. Nope. No, 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 no. <laughs> I dropped some mail. It's contrasting fedoras. <laughs> Uh, awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. You've seen like my other videos or my other hangouts. I have. I have. I seriously have a collection of hats right here and stuff like that. And I want to find a suit jacket that goes with this hat. That would be epic. Yeah. Yes. Gray and the gray or silver suit jacket with like a blue trim and stuff like that. Maybe a red tie. Why not? So. Uh, now with the fedoras have like derailed my train of thought too. No way, way like okay, you oh yeah, electoral college. People yeah. criticize the abolition of electoral college is that that will mean the big cities will be have the majority in most things and be the ones that voted presidents. I I don't think people understand stuff just how many even in big cities like Seattle, the area I live in, or San Francisco, or California, or. Uh, or Los Angeles or New York, they still have a lot of conservative people in those cities as well. And so yeah, I, mean, I don't think the results of the president will be as different and stuff like that. But you will actually get the president that the majority of people vote for and stuff like that. So that's yeah. why I agree with abolishing electoral college. And especially yeah. since it was also it was also kind of like instilled or put in place to support southern states that still had slavery. So that has that negative connotation too. Yeah, and 
Yeah, and it, it, I, I think it's, it was so annoying to know that, I mean, even if the person wins um, uh, the, uh, the popular vote, uh, like they win the, okay, they win the popular vote. Uh, it, it's like, it, it, was, it was at this point where I'm like, okay, this is, some of it was confusing. I thought, this is, why do we even have that? Like, like popular vote and all that type of thing. I think that if the majority want you, then I think that that should be a good enough indication that you should be the person that's the next president, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. I mean, that's um, that's why we have a two party system. The the idea yeah. the advantage of having two party system you get a majority as opposed to like multiple party system like Canada, New Zealand, and UK and stuff like that. Yeah, I've I've seen people argue that we should uh. Uh, I, I've I've had chats with people who are who have a who who uh, are outside the two party system. For instance, like of course, uh, the the top that I can name off of the top of my head are like uh, the independent people that are independent of any political party, party of the United States and the Green Party, uh, which they are a far left party. Uh, and I've met a number of people who are on the the far left who said. Uh, that while they, if they, if uh, if they had a shot, they would have voted for the Green Party. It was uh, tactical voting to vote for the Democrats in this in the last election. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just gonna ask out of curiosity: Are you yourself a Democrat? I'm not a registered Democrat, but ever since I became legal to vote, uh, then since and I've been voting since like 2002 or, or like 2001 or something like that. But for every uh, I probably have just voted Democrats for most all of the elections and stuff like that. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a registered voter of Democrats, but I have just like always voted for Democrats. I would have yeah. voted. I, I forgot to vote in the primaries. I'm a terrible person because I would have voted for Bernie Sanders in the primaries. Absolutely. Um, but I, would, yeah, I voted for Bernie Sanders because that was the best option. I mean, to me, I, I don't think I'd ever be a straight ticket voter, you know, where you vote for this one party every time. But yeah. If, if I can agree with the person on their issues, on their stances, then I will vote for them. Um, I would have voted for either Gary Johnson or Evan McMullen, even though I absolutely did not agree with Evan McMullen on the social issues. Uh, like, he's a pro-lifer. He would have reversed Roe v. Wade if he had the chance. And then there was uh, same-sex marriage, which he said he respected that decision, uh, funny enough. And his own mother was in a same-sex relationship, which I thought that was really ironic. Um and it, it was, and with Gary Johnson, um, I have to look up because I I did agree with him on the idea of legalizing marijuana, but of course not just that. I cannot remember every single thing they of course were for, but I can understand why some people uh, some people were arguing that it was capitalism to blame for why the election went where it went. Um, well, I mean, there's only there. Whenever someone blames I, I, just one thing, I say it's never just one thing. It's always multiple things. Capitalism may have played a role, but oh, I yeah. don't think it's the only thing that to, to be to be blamed. If there's anything, there's multiple things yeah. can cause people to do be fat or something like that. And there's multiple factors in most anything. Yeah, um, there's also. I, I genuinely think people were tired of Hillary Clinton. I, I, I think that's more of why uh, Donald Trump won the election. I mean, Democrats there was def Republicans... There, there was definitely that effect. That I would agree. Yeah, that effect. And, 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 and besides, Liber uh, Democrats and Republicans were the only ones with a shot. And yeah. this election was such a absolute uh, clusterfuck of, of, oh my god, her emails, or oh my god, what Donald Trump may have said, or or things he said, like I am, I'm, I have Mexican, I am of Mexican descent, right? And, and the whole their rapist thing really got, really did piss me off at the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, and and um, and it, it seemed like, yeah, they're the only ones with a shot. That's why I don't blame people for being outside the two party system. Um, for instance, and I and, and there was the effect of them being tired of her, and I think it was also the Streisand effect of. Do not vote for this person. They, they were pretty much giving him more attention than he deserved. 
Oh, yes, definitely. Because of how, because of like during that trail, it's like, wait a minute, what did President Trump, what did Trump say this week? I, they said President oh, Trump. Yeah. He wasn't president at the time, but he's president. Yeah, just, now. Yeah. Uh, even, but even now, it's just like there's something he says and something he does and something like that. He just got so much attention. And because oh, yeah. of that attention, you, you understand his policy. He wants to build a wall. That's stupid fucking wall he wanted to like ban muslims yeah. and he did try that but i protested that at least uh, the supreme court allowed that to take effect actually i, I believe this week um yeah there was and on that wall i mean personally i think it's a waste of money yeah i do consider myself fiscally conservative and socially liberal and with that wall it's like i think mexico already has a wall with guatemala i believe i believe it was even mexico who forced them to build that wall um so I would find it hypocritical for Mexico to complain about the U.S. doing the same. But like, like I, I do consider myself conservative in the area of, of immigration. I'm very much in favor of having people come to this country. Don't get me wrong. I do believe that it has to be done, of course, legally. Mm -hmm. This wall, I've, I've seen the arguments that, oh, it only, it, the only thing it stops is animals, which either way, I do consider a waste of money, and I... Was pretty unhappy, like about the whole the, the whole thing about that whole wall. I mean, if, if it would if it if it were to be worth it, if they they could show oh this is going to be worth it, then okay, maybe I'd consider it. As for uh, there, I think they already have prototypes in place, and in this wall, I don't I, I the the wall. There's certain areas of the border, like I think it's actually a, 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 there's this tri this indigenous tribe somewhere along the border or just some community um are you going to like build a wall around it or because you're not going to do it through it i mean i would not be surprised but and there's also certain parts of the u.s canada and u.s mexico border that are some are some are pretty well uh, guarded and others you could literally just walk right through and they might not even know like mm -hmm. there's like some fencing or absolutely nothing there mm -hmm. i saw that with the prison escape of 2015 and up in new york state i mean utah just to uh, by the way, but I, I they showed footage of the, the Canadian U.S. border having that happen, where there's literally nothing there. Yeah, that I think we need to worry about more than building a wall to protect an area that's probably already protected. So I'd yeah. say maybe spend worry about fencing other parts that need to be worked on. Um, so yeah, uh, I I mean I do I do kind of agree with the idea the idea of a limited government. Um, that's what Gary Johnson's for. Uh, because I, I think there's times where the government gets too big for its britches. The fact they ever got involved in marriage, I think, was, of course, wrong. Um, uh, and military non-interventionism, I agree with. I do believe we place the world too much, and we yep. sometimes come off as bullies, and there's nations that we've screwed over, and they're still in war, like, I believe, Afghanistan. If I'm wrong, I'll issue a correction, but we, for... Uh, and and we all we we've attacked nations where uh, I believe that they have a justified reason uh, to hate us because we much, we we screwed them over and it was absolutely unjustified. We invaded Iraq on this belief that they had weapons of mass destruction. We never found any. Yeah. Even Margaret Thatcher, think of her however you want, said that well she could get why they did that. She's the believer of having evidence to show they have the weapons of mass destruction. 90% of my country was in favor of it, and I believe they would have the right to say, okay, we, we didn't know any better, um, but people that, the politicians that supported it should have known better as they would be more experienced in the field in that type of thing than your average Amer uh, citizen. I'm not trying to be like insulting to American citizens, but I mean, they're not going to be as politically, uh, they'd be a little le less politically apt than uh, they are than, than the politicians, you know. Yeah. Um, as for repealing Obamacare, I'm not convinced. Like, and this is something I do get sick of because the big Republicans and, and other people have had a hard on for years with getting rid of Obamacare, and they failed. One of the majority, they failed, and I, I just laugh at that. You know, it's yeah. It's, it's like this is just ridiculous. 
even with their even with their Trump care or the uh, I don't for, I forgot what the official bill was and stuff like that. Critics of the bill, other Republicans, are saying this is just Obamacare light, and it's like wow, even even they kind of wrote like an Obamacare light bill and something like that. Then what do they want with the healthcare system and stuff like that? And yeah. and that's the area where it's just like the problem with capitalism. I think it was like the it's when you marketize. Uh, commo- necessities. That's where I would have a problem with it and stuff like that. Mm. And that's where another thing with like a capitalism and stuff like that. Uh, they kind of just like if there's not a market, they decide to create a market. Uh, I was I made a Facebook post that I shared of how the Gillette company kind of like it created and invented essentially the woman's razor and stuff like that in order to like market it. They kind of they did create in the 1950s those advertisements to that the women you want to like shave your underarms because no one wants to see unpleasant body hair there and stuff like that so it was it was it that like women actually wanted to shave their underarms in order to like look sexier and something like that or were they were advertised to do so and that's where it's like with advertisement and marketing and stuff like that we have been told that we need something that we probably don't really need because the company wants to sell product and stuff like that and mm. what with lifestyle marketing especially that's where i kind of have a problem with capitalism that well that's where it can't go too far and stuff like that mm telling us that we need uh, this and need that when we don't exactly yeah going back to what you said on that i do believe that well like i i even though i would and so i'm going to check the chat baphomet reborn says what the hell s man what is that on your head <laughs> I, will, baphomet, I will fight you i will fight you from your death the doras are better than Oh, God. I, will, I will go with you on as my fedora wearing brother. <laughs> yes, fedora wears for life. Um, I'm gonna post a. I'm gonna DM you the link to the stream if you wanna mirror it. Um, just while I, I have that in mind. Um, and I do believe. Well, I, I would find it sometimes a bit annoying when they show these commercials on our face of oh, you gotta have this frying pan that's really smooth and you can. You can make eggs in it, for instance, like scrambled eggs. That's something I'm a fan of. Or sunny side up, and you know, it doesn't stick to the pan. And while I, that's awesome, I don't necessarily need it. But it is, of course, I believe it's the consumer's choice to say whether or not they uh, whether they go out and buy it. Um, mm-hmm. Same with razors. Well, I would also find that message from the nineteen from nineteen fifteen example you provided there. Like, if I saw a commercial saying, "Oh, you got to shave this this." Part of your body because no one wants to see hair there. Uh, I would probably just not buy that commercial because I'm like, okay, they're just gonna be they're kind of being condescending. Um, and uh, you're you're a, you're a feminist, right? Um, from I think you said you were. Yeah, I pretty much I'm pretty much gonna identify as a feminist, yeah. a third wave intersectional feminist, as of like positive uh, <laughs> advocate for sex works and stuff like that. And uh, yes, I am wearing three hats right now, so I do look ridiculous. So I just noticed that like you can't really for a second like lag and I saw there's several appearing in your head and I'm like, Oh, he did some magic there. That's <laughs> awesome. Um <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and I guess I might have a, if you want to have, like, another discussion, like, we talk about that, we talk about, like, men's rights activism, we talk about egalitarianism. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I can get where some people come from on all positions, uh, but I think that'd be an, uh, another uh, stream for another day. Uh, sure. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and Johnson was in favor of c- cutting taxes, like, 14 times, never increase them. I do believe in, in, in minimum, like, I, I don't have a problem with uh, minimum, like, Reducing taxes for everybody, you know, for the poor, like especially for the poor. But I think they had a they had a report of uh, the taxes on the. I, I don't know how much it is for the rich. I'm not one of those people that say, oh, they're they're taxed too highly. But I, I can see right now because uh, while I'm thinking of this. Well, by the way, uh, I should have mentioned this a while ago, but your your audio has been scratchy. I don't know, like what you can do to fix that, like F five or something like that. I don't know. Uh, what do you mean, scratchy? Like uh, robotic? Is almost robotic, like yeah. Oh, in, in, uh, in oh. case you, in case you're concerned about like good audio for your hangouts and stuff like that, I don't know. If there's anything you can do about that. Um, uh, let me see. I'm I'm oh, in settings for right the now. 
Oh yeah, I, if I there's there's three things. If you go in your settings, there's default on my end. I have a Windows 10 uh, for this. Default mm -hmm. communications microphone Intel. Okay, that's just a bunch of letters. Okay. So okay, so it's clear now. Okay, awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, if my audio starts cutting out, I'll just switch it to some other thing in the Hangout. Um, all right, I'm gonna see how much are the rich tax because it is a topic I've heard some people say. Oh, they pay all, a lot already, which I'm. Okay, Pew Research. I do trust Pew Research, actually, to be honest. Uh, front, I'm staying as far away as I can from that. Um, um, while, while I'm looking at this to see how much they're saying, how much the U.S. government is fending, fend, funded, not fended. That's a new word, by the way. I invented. Okay, individual income taxes is 47.4%. Uh, other is 62 Payroll tax 32.8, 10.6 is corporate income taxes, excise taxes at 3%, uh, just over half of uh, Americans, 54% surveyed in fall by Pew Research Center say they pay the, about the right amount in taxes considering what they get from the federal government, versus 40% who say they pay more than fair share. But in a separate uh, 2015 survey, uh, survey um, by the center, six in ten, some six in ten Americans said they were bothered by a lot by feeling that some wealthy people and some corporations don't pay their fair share. I'm trying to see, uh, uh, yeah, how much I'm trying to get to the part where they say they are paid fairly. This is by PResearch.org Fact Tank, and then as a the question in the in the link, um, uh, who pays income taxes? The rich mostly, it says. Trying to see amount of income tax paid fifty one point six percent. They make two hundred fifty thousand dollars above. So I'm going to post this link in the hangout chat if you want to take a look at this yourself. So I can agree with lowering taxes for uh, all. I wouldn't say like oh we abolish it all together like taxation is theft. I mean, reasonably show me how it is theft. Uh, uh, then I would say all right, fair, uh, fair enough. Let me just um. Got to deal with something real quick for me. All right. So, yeah, I, I if they can reasonably show me that, yeah, taxation is theft, then I would I would stand by that statement. Anarcho-capitalists and right, libertarians further to the right than me say. Yeah, um, and, and I would take my, my, my personal opinion about, opinion like, about, like, what Kevin Wedge said about, about, about uh, Stephen Stephen Molyneux, Molyneux, the, the libertarian anarcho capitalist he's he's basically a guy like this i don't want to pay taxes there's some people that kind of act like that um there's people who say oh if you don't like like um they they use the analogy um people are not allowed to steal from you unless they are uh, the government like everybody is not allowed to steal from you like for instance i'm not allowed to steal your other fantastic fedoras from you but let's say our we had an economy Built off of Doras, that would be very awesome. Uh, if I was the government, I would be allowed to take them, and if you try to stop me, I'd use force against you. Um, <laughs> things like that. And that, I'll take a moment to say that would be a very awesome economy uh, if it was off of fedoras, but I'm. You'd have to find a way to carry all those fedoras. Like, oh, that, that thing's going to cost you 1.8 trillion fedoras. <laughs> you have enough fedoras to send you to the moon and back. <laughs> <laughs> or enough to the doors that like you can't go through, through normal doorways is unless in, without knocking them over and stuff like that like how i'm wearing my fedoras right now uh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep this on for the rest of the stream for a little bit until i got tired by how silly i'm looking and stuff like that uh let's see what was it? oh okay taxes now this is the interesting thing okay so personally for taxes i actually don't mind just like paying my share of taxes so something like that uh yeah. and i it's uh, it, it would like for it, it, taxes just in general is complicated especially u.s taxes and stuff like that let mm -hmm. me take off my doors while i talk about taxes so that we can be serious about that yeah. <laughs> uh is it, one thing is like it, in fact actually i talked to a politician and stuff like that don't you want to like pay less in taxes i just say to them no because i agree that by paying my share of taxes or a share of taxes and stuff like that it, how much of that share is we, that is definitely debatable and how much for each group and how much for that because some people just like don't understand how if you make more money you have to pay more in taxes and stuff like that and definitely we can get into the weeds of that but i'm fine with paying 
taxes for services that I don't use. Like people, like there are some people that believe that like, I don't want to pay taxes for schools because I don't have kids. Why do I want to like pay for someone uh, for schools for someone else's kids to be educated? Well, I personally am fine with that because I don't want to live in a world with a lot of dumb people. <laughs> Sad it feels do. like we are dumb people come from like i don't mind paying taxes for i, I i'm just gonna my aunt she used to be a teacher she was part of some teachers union and and they argued that they felt teachers were very much underappreciated and i, re I agree with that i believe education i believe it's uh, lonely wolf and i maybe somewhat disagree in an area about what it should be for i mean uh for me personally i think it's not a bad position to hold that I mean, extracurricular activities I'm fine with. Uh, there's, uh, there's some things like uh, YMCA. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar. I, I'm going to assume that you guys are, uh, at least Jonathan here is familiar with uh, YMCA. Uh, I used to go to those type of programs all the time. A lot of fun as a kid. Um, but like, there are certain classes where I don't see the point in having. Lonely Wolf has kind of convinced me I get why he views literature the way he does. Um, sometimes I do get frustrated because we're having to read this 110-page book called House on Mango Street. And while I don't ne necessarily dislike the book, it's the fact we've had to read the same book over and over. I kind of get tired of it. I mean, if we would read something like a John Grisham novel, I would much rather read that than uh, any... It's a book about some chick who grew up in Chicago uh, talking about Mexi Me Mexican culture. And while I, my, I, I am of Mexican descent, I don't find culture to be all that... Uh, intriguing. Um, I would never disrespect somebody's culture. Like I would never, uh, I would never like desecrate it with uh, like, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to r rub it in mud or something. Like I wouldn't do that. That that just that's just being a, a straight up prick. Yeah. Um. So so I get where a lonely wolf comes from, like in teaching people about it. Uh, but I I do find certain things like more important. Uh, for instance, in ROTC, a, a class I very much enjoy. Uh, you got the, right now. We've been learning about uh, CPR, first aid, uh, the Good Samaritan Act, the Good Samaritan Law, and things like that. Especially how to treat certain wounds and how to tell if someone's in shock, what to do, uh, how to deal with people that have a, a severe instances of like you get a cut and you're bleeding a lot. Mm -hmm. You got you got either make a make a tourniquet, uh, which that used to kill your limbs. Now they actually, I think they don't for the most part. I feel like that is so much more important to learn about because that deals with someone could die or they could uh, they could live. But I get where he comes from. With, I do believe uh, have people understanding how to read is very much in, a good thing. Um, oh yeah, I, I'm in fact yeah. um, Lonely Wolf is encouraging me to do more on YouTube to be more of a YouTuber. I have a script for like my dyslexia that I'm going to finish up. And so I totally get from you're coming from with like reading and stuff like that. In elementary school, we did a book report a month. I hated doing those. It, it's I it was oh, I was fine doing some of them on like books where I saw the movie of or like here I just guide the galaxy. I saw the TV show, the British TV show. So I can I can pass through that. But for all the books, even books I chose from like the libraries, so like I didn't even read the books and stuff like that. So, but I even with that, I still did. I still felt like my literature education was like. Uh, helpful to me. And the thing is, also, I would say, and, and, uh, on the topic of education, and it's it, like philosophy or even humanities or something like that, or even learn about art history, uh, you might not see a direct and a, phys uh, a practical application for that kind of education but that education can help you to be more well-rounded i mean there's this like garrett would like on his channel used to say about like in the book the history of everything when he the author of that book found a guy at the like a british uh university in the biology department that was a expert in this particular kind of musk he can tell you everything about, about that musk every single thing you want to know about that particular subspecies a musk but he cannot have a conversation with normal human beings so that's why I'm not saying that those kind of things are, should be a focus, but they can be. But all those kind of educations of like philosophy, literature, humanities, and stuff like that, and like uh, 
certain number of extracurricular activities being required can help someone be a more well-rounded person. It's, it's fine to go to universities and to go into STEM fields or go to um, the vocational schools to learn about like welding or even technical colleges, stuff like that. But there is something for like someone being more well-rounded to be able to like, when they have to do something else that they should do. And that's kind of part of my general uh, feelings about like education. I mean, like I play poker from like 2004 to 2013 and stuff like that. And I felt that like how, what I learned in playing poker, I can apply to like other things. I mean, just, the, there's a book called The Poker Mindset. You can uh, use that poker mindset and apply to anything else in life. And poker players agreed that like, if they just apply the poker mindset to their other aspects of life, they will have much more fulfilling life. They will just they sit, they will just admit, I'm just more lazy in the rest of the life as opposed to poker. And and also, in like in, even in poker, the, a lot of professional poker players is tell you it, or they express that it's better to be more round and round at poker part. Don't just learn no limit Texas hold'em. Even though that's the the TV poker game of choice and stuff like that. The world says men invent is to no limit Texas hold'em. It is good the things you learn from studying seven card stud of how each street is dealt one at a time and so mm -hmm. and they're yeah. dealt face up and there's more information you can learn and how the players change the way they bet in based on these streets. That you can apply that to the other games in poker. So you've, so that's why I kind of feel that people should be more well rounded in general or something like that. Some people don't take the, are not interested in history. And that's one thing, sure. And so it sucks for that person to be forced to learn history or take a history class, for sure, yes. It's probably better for people to uh, decide on their courses and decide what classes they want to take because a interested uh, student is a much better student than an uninterested student. Mm -hmm. Only Wolf, are you there? You haven't spoke. It hasn't froze, or at least not on my end. I just was standing there, here still. Yeah. And um, make any sense? Um, also, it just seemed it seemed like another. Yeah, he hasn't spoken in like fifteen. You alive, man? I, I think I think he's probably he's probably pa he's probably passed. Yeah, I turn. Yeah, I turn on that and lag. You, you there, Wolf? I'm assuming he's, he's rest. I, I I will um this beanie in in his arm. If uh, the ca I don't know if it's gonna turn back on the camera. Oh, there it goes. The beanie has returned. Everybody, I lost this thing such a long time ago. But yeah, beanies and fedoras. I think they're the best thing ever. I have a fez. Well, <laughs> um, there's um and. Uh, I think uh, I, I think he's probably. I, I don't blame him. I don't know what time it is in Australia because one time zone I know is the Mountain Standard Time type thing. Um, and, and when I, when it comes to like uh, politicians, and everything because I I feel like I should mention this. It is always important. Like people, it's like they just vote for the other for someone else because they feel like they're not as bad. To learn about their foreign policy and their type of thing. Um, especially, especially foreign policy. Uh, for instance, uh, opposing foreign wars and pledging to cut the military budget by forty-three percent too much on our military budget. I think that if we were if we were to cut it by that forty-three percent, uh, I, I think we'd still be fine. Yeah, personally, I agree. I feel like we're. I feel like we're. We, we spend way more than our allies, and especially our allies. That's shocking, and. We spend um, way, we spend way more on military than our enemies. The yeah. closest one, yeah, spend, yeah, our enemies and allies. You're still there. I I can't Wait hear you. Okay, you you're there, but I think it's lagging. Huh? You, oh, you can't hear me. Uh, for a second, you it, you can't. In the, it, the last thing I heard is like I can yeah. fix that audio thing. Yeah. 
And Lonely Wolf at any mm. time. Uh, Lonely yeah, Wolf. Yeah, go ahead. Any, I was just gonna say that the Lonely Wolf at any time you can jump right in so that you we know that you are alive in this stream at least. Uh, I don't have anything else to say about yeah. that. You, so you continue your point. If we spend more than our allies, and I think we do spend more than our enemies. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think that we'd be fine if we were to cut the spending. I, and you immediately will get the straw man of, oh my god, you hate America. Put the money towards more useful things. Like, and this th and I think we get involved with way too many wars. Like, I, I think if you cannot imagine yourself in war, you shouldn't advocate for it. Yeah. Um, punching Nazis. If you wouldn't do it yourself, then you should not advocate it. I mean, I... I used to be strongly against it, and now I, I've changed. I've I've kind of changed my mind. Uh, but I think I think I'll I'll do a video probably explaining why. Um, my opinion on punching yeah. Nazis is like personally for myself. I want to be the one to do it, and it is still a crime to assault someone. I have no problem with that law. Yeah. I agree with that law. But if someone for reasons for wants to punch that person, specific people like Richard Spencer and stuff like that, I wouldn't have a problem for that person punching yeah. Richard Spencer. And plus, I if I can't if he knows of the consequences, but still is willing to punch that person this by the consequences, then I'm not. Gonna stop that person. It, it's just I would. Yeah, I'm not stop gonna stop him either. Right, exactly. So yeah, I, I agree. Is it, is it advocating punching Nazis? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I'm not sure myself on that. I'm part of me does actually agree with Antifa just on principles. Some of their tactics, yes, but I agree with Antifa on their principles. Yeah, and I. I, yeah, I, I I very much I I. Go ahead. Good. Oh, okay. With Antifa, I can I strongly agree with anti-racism, anti-sexism, anti-homophobia, anarcho-communism. I their tactics, especially fascists. Uh, I I know that sounds like an overuse, but I think it is a true point. Like, like if if um if someone is not harming you, like for instance, if I hit you in the face, and let's say I hit you first, if you hit back, I think you're totally justified. You were, first of all, defending yourself, and it's not as if you had no justification. Uh, you know, things like that. But if you, but if you're not under threat, then I, I don't think it's justified. Also I, also, I would say you should look at what are the consequences. If that person's stronger than you, they could probably curb stomp you to death, and they would be kind of justified. Maybe not in the sense of they killed you, but the fact they hit back. Uh, or they might, or a group of people might attack you for it. So you got to weigh in: is that worth it? And if you, and if, if you couldn't see yourself do it, then I would not advocate for it. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to condemn or praise you. And if I had the power to arrest you, I probably would grudgingly not do it. But if we caught you, then I would say to follow the rules, you would be arrested. But I wouldn't like seek the harshest punishment under the law. Um. Oh, and um, I'm trying to find the okay. Uh, civil liberties. Uh, uh, I'm very much in favor of drug decriminalization. You know, uh, I do oppose censorship of the internet. I, I am looking over the civil liberties thing. I can find some things I agree on and some things that I need to read up on. I did do a live discussion about net neutrality. Uh, yesterday, I should, I, yeah, I should. I personally should do more too. Like try to come bad at the at and stuff like that. Try. I should call them, like, my representatives and like uh, tell them to like please support net neutrality. I think they do because uh, my representatives seem to like towards the lean towards that side and stuff like that. But I should so do more to try to combat that. And uh, I hope that I just really hope that they don't like roll back uh, the charter to or. Uh, regulations that mm -hmm. they have because I do want to like a, a new tr net neutrality as it, as it was been in, in stated uh, in 2015 with chartered stricter charter to regulations. I knew I am neutral on it because I used to see net neutrality, but we've had times I've I've kind of lost uh, I've kind of lost uh, concern about it. I mean, I hope we do keep it, but I'm not that concerned about it anymore because July, people are like, oh, net neutrality, we might lose it now or but, but of this year, and then and now we're, here we are with it still. Um, 
Well, and, and, I yeah. can actually, I, I just, the thing was like, it's regulations, it's government regulations with net neutrality, with charter two, stricter charter two rules. And in a capitalist society and stuff like that, there will be companies that have a lot of capital, a lot of money, a Verizon and Comcast and stuff like that. They will do their best as much as possible in order to deregulate the government or deregulate things so that they can just make more money by like charging Netflix more for uh, their use of the services and stuff like that or charging their customers more in certain areas because they're in sewers and it also it's without regulations if a company doesn't want to like provide service to like a very rural area with not a lot of money, and then they'll they will take the option of not doing that because it won't make them a lot of money and stuff like that. And that's where I'm kind of I I'm for regulations to ensure that everyone has the same access to the internet or access to roads to transportation access to services and stuff like that part of, as part of my yeah. personal beliefs of like i think everyone should have the right to food shelter and healthcare and stuff like that and i personally do think also that the internet is should be used as a utility because i mean this day and age i go to like a jack in a box at mcdonald's and ask for an application You'd be lucky if there's still an establishment that has paper applications. I've been oftentimes they've been told me to go to the website and stuff like that. And that's where I think yeah. that's where it's like the internet should now be a utility because we need that in order to get jobs. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um hang on a second, let me just check the chat. I, I'm not looking at the chat at all, so I don't know no, if they're saying no, there's there's there was only one person who who's, who got salty about me having a, a fedora on my head. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so there's, there's a few, yeah. Uh, on the civil liberties list, I just found that I that I, I can agree with, and some I I do not know enough to give an opinion on. Mm -hmm. um, I do with um, indefinite detention of prisoners. I think that does violate some constitutional rights. I did I do not like Guantanamo Bay. Uh, that's is an example. And I'm in and, favor of the separation. Of, and, Barack huh? Obama, look, and Barack Obama said that he was going to promise to like uh, get rid of Guantanamo Bay and stuff like that, and he didn't. And in fact, use it more after the fact, or, or, or I believe, but I think he did promise on the campaign trail that he would take mm -hmm. down Guantanamo Bay. And, and I'm not going to fault any politician. And to make promises on the campaign trail and don't meet them and stuff like that. Because on the campaign trail, just in general, it is all talk. That's just what it is. That's what they're doing. They're on the podium, out for rallies, giving speeches, and they are talking. And so, and other than like having been in office already and having a voting history and stuff like that, uh, you cannot know what a politicians or candidates' of positions are. Um, it, unless they talk about it, something like that. Uh, but yeah, it, that's why. Uh, yeah, Obama. I did vote for Obama both both times, but yet Obama did have some problems, and he, he yeah. did some he, in foreign policy. The Democrats and the Republicans, right? Are they're the same right now in foreign policy? Sure. Yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, people say there's Republicans and Diet Coke Republicans, uh, or they, they or Republican esque type of things. Especially with foreign policy, um, things like that, um, and uh, the Patriot Act, uh, enhanced airport screenings. I've heard the arguments to get rid of the TSA. I mean, if they can show that we would be safer without the TSA, then I would say okay, then we get rid of. It. But if if they can't, then I'd say it's the the, the cons out do not outweigh the pros in that instance. The Patriot Act. Uh, go, no, go ahead. You go. I ahead. was about to say it's like I think there is some usefulness to the TSA. I mean, it's sometimes it's just like wait a minute, one guy yeah. puts a bomb in his shoe, and now we all have to take off our shoes. As a comedian, Alonzo Bones says, "Where are the bra bombers?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the the Patriot Act, yeah, yeah, There's a lot of civil liberties. Where the Patriot Act. Forgets and forgoes and stuff like that, and so I, I don't mind that being taken back, that, that mm. being rolled back, or just get rid of and stuff like that. Mm. Airport screenings, uh, I think that sometimes they do go a little far. 
I mean, if they if they just show, oh, you have no weapons on you, that's fine. But sometimes I think they get a little too revealing. Uh, the this, this, this separation of church and state, I'm strongly for. I am an atheist, but if someone believes in a god or a higher power, I have no problem with it. Yeah. I also a, believe that it's a good idea a, to... Oh, you're an atheist as well? I'm a... How I... De, the, I'm going to... This is how my older brother kind of identifies as. He's a secular, humorous, atheist, agnostic, deist. And I'm more or less the same thing. Uh, me... Because uh, here's... A, um, I'm, I was... I have three brothers. So I'm... I'm the third of four sons. Uh, we are all raised Catholic. I hated the wine at church. Mm -hmm. I hated, hated, hated the wine at church. That would prevent me from like liking alcohol or drinking alcohol for the longest time. Uh, but my parents, I love them both. They instilled in all four of us the ideas of being open-minded and uh, thinking for ourselves, which is how it led eventually all four of us to be atheists or agnostics. <laughs> So yeah, I definitely strongly agree with the separation of church um, and state. I used to too. be agnostic when I was younger. I was a bit of an apathist. Yeah, I used to be an apathist where I didn't really care, and I've realized that it's not a bad idea to care because religion sometimes does a play effect in certain things happening. Like some people use religion, and sometimes uh, people will use religion to, like in stories to try and further the plot. And I'm like. Hmm. That's interesting, you know, to see if they got it correct or not. Or, or sometimes when it, to religious people, for instance, there was this kid who was uh, Jewish and he faced anti-Semitism in one in school I was at, and uh, I I let the people that were mocking Nazis did that as well, right? Or, and and they when they when they heard that they backed off. Or when people were being like that towards Muslims, uh, Muslim students, I would say the same thing. You know, if this person was Jewish, would you do that? And they realized they shouldn't. Or people they would like. Or these Christians, uh, or, like, they were never made fun of, but they were kind of ones that would be, uh, people would call them stupid and say, oh, you can't be intelligent because you believe in the Bible. It's like, well, I don't believe in the Bible. I don't think that necessarily means you're intelligent or not. Uh, like, mm -hmm. I mean, my, parents, my, my parents are still religious too, and it's like it, uh, when I was in my asshole atheist phase and stuff like that, and that's where I did. I used to believe that like I you can't be I religious and intelligent and stuff like that. And there's some like data that seems to back that up and stuff like that. But I it, but no, I can think that I still kind of think that like person just compartmentalized like they. If they believe in God or something like that, no, no, not necessarily believe in God, but if they believe in the Bible or any religious text and something like that, they, they all most Christians as well as most Muslims and most Jewish people or most anyone else of any religion, they don't wholeheartedly believe in the Bible. Uh, but and there are many moderate Christians, and uh, and I think so. Like even though, I think it's like it's not they're not unintelligent. Is be like the fundamentalists. If even if there are fundamentalists that are intelligent, they probably just like don't use like their intelligence when they believe in the Bible and stuff like that, like Ken Ham or stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah. yeah. So, so now, but now I think no, no, no. It, it, many people are religious and they are they can be intelligent as well. Oh, so I kind of changed yeah. my opinion. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, and I especially like it when politicians don't invoke god or any religion when they're doing their speeches or they're going on the campaign trail like if they avoid it i have more respect for them uh you know things like that uh, johnson endorsed same-sex marriage i strongly agree i always felt like uh uh it's the government should never have been involved uh i do believe it should be constitutionally protected uh marriage equality i was glad the the supreme court had um uh, had had declared it unconstitutional to have it just between a man and a woman, yeah. but I feel like it should have gone further to make it guaranteed under the Constitution, because people have been saying with Trump in in, in the White House, and, and uh, that his administration might start rolling that back or or could potentially roll that back. Yeah, that's the thing I, in general, actually, about like human rights. It's one thing to say you are for human rights, but it's another thing to create 
uh, to create structures to protect human rights and stuff like that. And that's where it's like, I personally think we should n systemically create structures or create programs and to reinforce the human rights or what we believe are human rights. It's, yeah, we can maybe like agree, disagree on many different things, which is why it's still democracy, I think. And, but it, we, I think it is imperative to like be able to create structures to to uh, or create the, the infrastructure actually uh, policies to not only say we are for these human rights but also protect those human rights as well but also protect those human rights as well oh yeah i i agree that was actually very well put um yeah and there's a there's um on a uh I also like looking through people's what their policies are so you can get a better understanding of what they are for and what they're not and determining the mix of is it worth it, even if you disagree on certain things. Um, abortion, John, Gary Johnson supports it. Uh, well, he's in favor of it. Very much in, for, in favor of it. I mean, I can't have children, and it does not affect me, so I think that if, if you don't if you don't want to have a child... I mean, I, I of course, want people, a woman to always look at all her options. Uh Oh, bro? Yeah. Okay. Um, so me and uh, me and uh, Jonathan here have been uh, uh, hanging out here for a minute. Um, so um, I'm just going to assume you probably had to deal with uh, with your bird for a minute. Um, we, we were just talking about uh, human rights and stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, ab abortion, I believe, is I'm very much pro-choice. Uh, if you want, if you don't want to have the child, that's fine. Or if you do want to have the child, that's fine. I just want everyone, like anyone who's about who might become a parent, to decide to, of course, think about it, to not rush any decision. I don't, I don't think anyone would because no matter what choice you choose, your life is affected forever. Mm -hmm. As yeah. for yeah, oh yeah, um, me and Lonely Wolf, uh, where we and him did have a chat uh, about. Uh, on Twitter about uh, Ben Shapiro's video response to some woman who was a celebrity, who, who is a celebrity, I can't remember what her name was, but he kind of did straw man, he did kind of uh, straw man her uh, to oblivion with uh, his video trying to um, destroy, with quotes, uh, her on the topic of reproductive rights. She never even mentioned abortion, she just said reproductive rights, which doesn't necessarily entail that. Um, things like that. Um, legalization of marijuana. We did kind of go over that, I think. And uh, pardoning NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that, so I, I'm not sure if I uh, agree with that entirely. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not as informed by Edward Snowden, even when he was yeah. the biggest news story of that year and something like that. To know about that or not, but uh, and yeah. if if, you, if people would like want would complain about like big government, I can see how government surveillance and that kind of like deep level can be problematic because that is a privacy issue as well it's like that and if like mm -hmm. if we give up that kind of liber liberty to privacy or agree to give up that liberty to privacy and sometimes we don't even agree to it it's not like it, it wasn't up to us it, or it wasn't put to the vote or like the people we voted in to represent us didn't have the chance to do that or did they decide to do that despite of how we feel about that that's where mm -hmm. I can I definitely see See how that's where big government can go bad and go wrong. I definitely agree to that. Is that government surveillance can't go too far? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's too much. In, I guess in I guess in education, there's a lot of like sort of surveillance and things like that. It's like the um, resemble all, all, and it's kind of like a lot of the waste of money. It's like all this national testing and then retesting and retesting and retesting and retesting, and, retesting and it's just like choked up with this bureaucratic sort of garbage and i hate standard tests period i don't see the point of like standardized tests it's just seems They're so flawed okay you cut out for quite a bit oh okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah standardized testing it's like and, and that's this is where uh, I think it should be education for the sake of education. And when you think about it, why do we have the grading system that we do? Okay, the, now the tests in general yes, it is a way to understand if like your students are actually retaining the information that you are giving them and something like that. So the, I can definitely see the purpose of that. But with the standardized testing, 
to determine which school districts get certain amount of funding and not uh, is like, and the, the school districts or the schools is funding depends on that. It's like, that, that's, that's, that's crazy. One thing I've, I've heard is that people would say school funding should not be determined by the property tax because, and I, I never had the problem with the property tax and being what determines school funding until they said that with the property tax, determining the school funding, certain areas would have better funding for their schools and then had not have better schools than other areas with low property value having low value of their schools and something like that. And that's where it's like, whoa, okay, I I can definitely see that now. And so, and so I think a much fairer system of funding school or across the board, most every school, every public school has the appropriate amount of funding, has an equal level of funding so that like everyone has the same good education as everyone else. That's because with that, that's a problem, a systemic problem where you can get um, the, the kind of like, <clears throat> gerrymandering or like almost like a new Jim Crow where it's like certain poorer areas areas that happen to be black areas or people of color areas of black and Latino, those ones don't do as well. And that's because of the property tax of being the sole source of like school funding and stuff like that. And that's the problem that I believe needs to be fixed and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um and also uh, sometimes, uh, and there are certain parts of education I think understand uh, are are sometimes especially lacking, especially important areas. Uh, sexual education. Um, I some I feel like sometimes they they do, uh, especially in the past. It used to be very um, restricted, and certain things would be lost. Uh, they are they are currently teaching us about consent, which that's awesome. I mean, I've known for about over two thirds of my life the idea of of consent, learning about the word consent, especially because I wasn't sure what to call it, just permission, um, especially to understand the the importance of of consent and the importance of of um, protected sex versus unprotected sex. What forms of protection are most to least effective? Uh, like failure rates for not for uh, no contraceptives whatsoever is eighty five percent, zero percent. But I, I tend to be try to be more realistic. Are people going to uh, be abstinent? I doubt it. Uh, but I would encourage if they're going to do it. But I would if they're going to do it, I would encourage them. I would actually probably beg, please, for the love of all things holy, use per, use like a condom or and the and birth control other forms of birth control at the same time. Um, and people, sometimes some religious people, act like it's a horrible thing. And of course, not to generalize, but you know, I hope everyone gets the picture I'm painting. Uh, things like that. Um, I, and Jonathan, if you're, if if it's all right with me asking you, what is your uh, stance on gun control? Because I'm on the final part of this list, and it mentions gun control, and I'd like to get your stance on it. Because I already got Lonely Wolves. Uh, but, so gun you know. control. Uh... I'm just, I'm just personally, personally, I'm not a fan of guns. It's, now, uh, the, I have fired BB guns for Cub Scouts and as well as bow and arrows, and I find that fun. Um, yeah. But uh, it, the it is in like the Second Amendment, but yet there's also the connotation with the Second Amendment that like the reason why that was in place with like a well. Um, a, a well organized militia and stuff like that is to keep down the slave revolts and stuff like yeah. that in the southern states. And so, um, but I also have distant relatives, and I know people actually I work with, co workers that like hunt. So I never going to like, t I, I'm not for like absolutely taking away the guns. So, and um, even if I were to like for like a gun buyback program of some kind, I'm not going to like. I say hunting is a separate thing. People couldn't allow to have like their hunting rifles. Definitely, I don't see the problem of like people decide to hunt. I, I personally would. I, I, I used to also be like for animal rights, and so I would personally say I'm for that. But not everyone's going to agree on like animal rights. Period. I am a meat eater, for example, and so you know, that's why it, it's, not, it's. I'm not going to fight to take away people's hunting rifles. No, they can hunt. Uh, but guns, I think, are 
I, 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 guns for protection, like handguns or something like that. I'm not sure. And right now, as it stands, it's kind of it's probably is for good protection to have a handgun <laughs> in certain areas and stuff like that. But I would personally not want to do that. But I would. I, but having a handgun around, it's. I feel it's. Um, feels like it's causes an unsafe environment and stuff like that because if someone gets high and the gun is somehow to be loaded and with the safety odd uh, tr a tragic accident can easily happen so but if the if you take the gun out of that situation and or there's less guns around for that situation to happen and that's i believe that having the gun around gives the opportunity for a tragic that's accident to happen wild. Yeah, so like, um, what is it? I'm just gonna. I always quote The Simpsons. It's like, um, you know, um, like the guns aren't toys; they're for hunting dangerous or delicious animals and for keeping the King of England out of your face. <laughs> uh, so, with the gun control in the in America mm -hmm. specifically, with the it's not so much the gun laws themselves, or like certain guns are, um. Uh, Illegal and stuff like that. Like I, I I'm for banning yeah. RF-15s. Um, uh, that one's it's like used a lot in a lot of mass shootings and stuff like that. And and so I think I think I'm definitely would say let's ban that one at least. Uh, but the, the other, but then again, the thing is, it's not just like the laws. It's also the culture, the culture around the gun, including the assault rifle, uh, like the RF-15s or like the machine guns and so on. It's that culture of um, America's culture around the gun and how we idolize it and how we almost fetishize it and so on like that with gun magazines and stuff like that. And it's its own industry. It's that's the problem too, but also, I mean, Peter Coughlin. Say what you will about him, if you have an opinion about the YouTuber, he did make a uh, many Peters, I believe, video about gun control, where he says, "Listen, there are a lot of like white nationalists, white supremacists, neo Nazis, neo Confederates, and those kind of people that have a lot of guns." Period. Uh, and so, like in that Vice piece with like uh, Christopher Cantwell, he showed off his gun correction that he brought with him to Charlottesville. Um, and so, there's a lot of people like that uh, at various degrees of like their political opinions and stuff like that, and various degrees of like a cache of guns that they have. And if you if we start like banning guns uh, on a federal level, like with gun buyback program, Peter Coughlin put out the idea that. Those people would then start going out and buying more guns and then hoarding guns. And then if they decide to get violent or get organized to get violent, that can be very dangerous to a lot of people, especially a lot of marginalized people and stuff like that. And so I, it, the gun control, I don't know what the correct answer is. And so I, I'm not – it's all, all I, right. I can understand people who want to say let's start doing a government buyback or start – doing something to get rid of guns completely yeah. i would never be personally get rid of hunting guns for example yeah because that's a separate issue yeah um uh, yeah um i want to actually go back to something you said about uh christopher cantwell while i strongly disagree with him and i strongly disagree with that whole charlottesville incident i i would simply say that if we start to ban people from owning guns because of political opinions at what point would we? At what point would we stop? You know, and also with gun control in the United States, I believe it's. I, I can't remember what the percentage of what of, of the guns that were used were obtained illegally, and gun control would not affect. The, uh, would affect that, and if we did ban AR, uh, I can't remember what caliber of gun you mentioned earlier about what you would have no problem banning. That would in, that would help the black market because now that that's banned, people could just go to the black market and buy that gun, uh, and circumvent that gun control. And there's a number of shootings, a number of mass shootings, like the one in Sandy Hook, the one in that Colorado theater in twenty. Uh, tw I think it was also twenty twelve. So twenty twelve was the year of, of national shootings, uh, that I can name off the top of my head. Those were gun-free zones, and it was not because of the like the overabundance of guns, but I'm not sure if you could say it was because of the lack of guns. 
I think if you want to carry a gun, uh, like conceal, conceal it. Don't like open carry, uh, as I feel like you'd be targeted first if you're open carry. Uh, like if they can visibly see your gun, if you carry it, like you conceal it, then I'm fine with it. Um, and people have shown statistics saying that while gun crime is decreasing, gun ownership is increasing. Not like oh, if we if gun ownership's decreasing, gun crime uh, will decrease. Uh, and simply put, I can get where people come from. Like especially, I think one of the victims, of, uh, relatives of the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre, she wrote a letter to the president saying she wanted all guns banned, military, the police, and citizens. I get why she said that. It, she was very distraught because of, of losing a relative to a school shooting, right? And she saw that as... So I, I get why she'd say that, but I would still disagree. Um, and simply put, uh, with... with uh, I mean, I, I understand why you don't like guns. For me personally, I have fired guns. I've done so since I was 11. I don't personally... I'm not afraid of guns. Uh, I'm an enthusiast. But... I do find them quite uh, fast. Learn about their history and things like that. I don't see gun control being the answer. I don't think it would work for America. Chicago has a for uh, Chicago has gun control, and their crime rate is insane. No, like the, uh, I think the there's, I don't know how many trinity. homicides. Yeah, it's the holy trinity yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like the holy trinity. It's like the um, it's the guns, the the titty magazines, and the flag. Those yep. are the three, the three and things it, you can't fuck with in yep. America. Yeah, and, yep. And in New York, they uh, they have. I think they, they have some pretty strict gun laws too, and their crime rate is. Insane. Uh, well, I don't. I don't know yeah. what the examples of like Chicago and the the York's like, of uh, those like. See, they have strict gun laws, but yet they still have a lot of crime. I don't know what's the truth in that. It may. It's probably not correlation or causation, or it's more than the other. I I honestly don't know enough, but I, I and I'm. But I would be basically. I'll basically be in support of either in like strict gun laws, uh, banning AR AR fifteen or. Um, or just like maybe moving towards incrementally towards by a uh, uh, governor buyback program of like other guns and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, it, it, so that's where I, I that's where I basically I stand on like gun control. It's just like I, I don't like it. Also, the, we should do studies on like gun safety and gun control, but yet in a piece by on last week tonight with John Oliver, he showed how the NRA. Uh, specifically, have been so well organized to make sure that the like uh, the the Food and Drug Administration or, or like the uh, the uh, one of the government commissions did not do studies on guns and stuff like that. And so that's one problem as well with the gun yeah. lobbyists and stuff like that. And yeah. you can tie that to like capitalism as well, where it's like, hey, you just got a lot, you've got enough money, you can pretty much buy a politician and stuff like that. It, yeah, I am, I'm in favor of getting money out of politics. I've, um, I've, I've always viewed it as, uh, un, I would say, unethical to uh, have corporations to be, like, to show yourself, for, to, you know, show yourself for, it may, that, like, I realized that sounded, like I said, kill instead of shill for itself out to corporations if you're a politician. I think that's very unethical. Um, and that's, both si that's the problem on both sides of the party, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hillary Clinton was known as, as a major show for corporations and other, other, I'm pretty sure, I can't name any Republicans off the top of my head, but I bet they were pretty. Uh, they, Cruz, they showed themselves. Marco Rubio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the only thing, because um, it seems so, it seemed really kind of hollow, like she was she seemed to be spouting what everyone wanted to hear, like especially from the progressive side. Like there was all these feminist principles, and then it was almost like she was just saying, "Oh, um, feminism, trans people, black people, midgets." I mean, um, I mean, she she did not came out came out as a politician in favor of like same sex marriage until like 2013. That was yeah. really late to the party. She could so that's where yeah, and like I said earlier, and like politics. 
politicians on the campaign trail will say whatever they want to appease their base or to get enough votes to get into office. But once they're in office, who knows what they're going to do and stuff like that. And actually with like some of the Republicans, but the Democrats, I'm sure as well, they will this is they won't necessarily vote in the interest of their constituents like with the Republicans in the health care bill they'll vote for the donors base and something like that like with the tax bill and stuff like that and so yeah, uh, yeah th i think the first thing in, in the election reform if we want to do election reform other things we can do as well but i think it's like we got to like get rid of like the money primary and stuff like that and i believe there's organizations that try to like at least think of the ideas of what to do that and i think uh, one solution is that like every candidate that like will get to be in a public office or run for a public office something like that here's this chunk of money for you to like a sponsor to run your campaign or something like that and, and how to determine that chunk of money will be up to four debates for sure but you can only use like this chunk of money but also with like other public services like, like of newspapers and media or something like that here's your debates that you can do whereas like you don't have to like do, spend any money to get to debates but you can have this debate and something like that or other facilitated like things for hey if you're going to run for public office you'll be given these things so that way everyone's on the same uh playing level everyone can only spend this chunk of money that's publicly funded even though people even though that's a hard sell for people it's like what i'm gonna pay my taxes so that they can just like run and stuff like that but i think it's important because like if for not having that government give sponsored or given a month, chunk of money for you to run your campaign on and have can only use that chunk of money to run your campaign on then other people then who the people who win or get voted into office is always the person that spends the most money that's unfortunately the reality that it is, which is why I, I don't have that much of a problem with any uh, politician being in the back pockets of corporations right now, because mm -hmm. that's just the game. You need money to run a campaign, period. And it's all about money. And so that's the game aim that you have to play. So that's why I would say hate the game, not the player, which is so which is why I don't I don't hate Hillary Clinton as much as others do. I hate the game. Yeah, and um yeah that that makes sense and uh she ended up spending more i think than any uh person who campaigned for the white house for the for the presidency uh than anyone in history i think she did more than obama did actually and she spent quite more than donald trump did mm -hmm. um and she still she still didn't win that i mean yeah. i mean i don't i don't have any personal i don't hate hillary clinton i don't have any personalized vitriol towards her um it, like especially towards any president, even if even if I found what they did atrocious, like in their in their time in office, I think that once they leave office, I, I if I were to have any hatred or personalized vitriol towards them, that would be over. For instance, yeah. was Margaret Thatcher, who was the prime minister in the first female prime minister in the UK, when she died, um, people had absolute. Some were very saddened by her loss, and some. Uh, uh, we're very happy by it. Uh, public celebrations over death and other personalized vitriol. Well, I'm not going to police you if you do it. I personally wouldn't engage it myself. And I've always viewed it as uh, that that election in general was a shit show. She, she and Donald Trump were some of the most unpopular candidates we ever had run for yeah. the presidency, and people saw it as the lesser of two evils. And, and the and the polls and the polls kind of mislead us because we thought Hillary was polled favored it by seventy five percent. So, in in not not only just like the layman thought that Hillary was going to clearly win, but also if fish, it, uh, political scientists were just like, well, look at the poll data; it's clearly going to be Hillary Clinton and win. Uh, that's kind of this election kind of like shows like well, poll data is one thing; it's just not the absolute truth of it as well because it's just yeah. data, it's just statistics and that sort of thing. But that kind of, I think the what we didn't expect to happen was that like the secret Trump voter was a factor because there would be pe there probably were people that said in a poll, even an anonymous poll, I'm voting for Hillary because that's the popular thing to do because he said you're voting for Trump, you get a lot of people that will hate you, well, me included. Uh, and so that's why they, even in poll, they said, no, I'm going to vote for Hillary, but at the polls, at the election day, they voted for Trump. Yeah. I personally do not agree with hating somebody based on who they voted for. Agreed. Uh, uh, personally, it's, 
it, a lot of people voted for Trump for a lot of different reasons. Like they are just hardcore Republican, or it's just like I they def- prefer to vote for a Republican over a Democrat any day, no matter what. Like I think people who su- are supporting the candidate Roy Moore in Alabama kind of like identifies that is much better for like a, a sexual predator to be in the Senate seat than a Democrat any day. There are definitely people that vote that way, but people. A lot of people vote for a lot of different reasons. So I don't blame anyone that is a Trump voter because there's a lot of reasons why they voted. But but if you are a Trump supporter, and I mean, if you are still a Trump supporter today with all the things that's going on, that's where I have a hard problem. That's where I do have a problem with that person. If you're a Trump supporter, not if you're a Trump voter, but if you're a Trump supporter. Yeah, I, I, I could not find myself in agreement with Donald Trump, actually. Um, I could get where he came from on immigration, but I, I, I still could not get over the whole, oh, the Mexicans, they're rapists, that comment really personally yeah, bothered me. Like, building a wall? I mean, fuck. I, yeah, it's like building a wall. To me, that is a waste of money. And I don't, I personally do not like the idea of wasting money. I think it's, because there's others who would probably need it more than me, so if I'm going, I'm going to conserve it, so, and, or, and spend it on things I genuinely or, need. Or spend it on something else. I mean, like we were talking about earlier about the military's uh, budget and stuff like that. Uh, I agree with cutting that military budget and use it for something else. Or like what Eisenhower did in his presidency, he took the military budget that he felt we don't need to spend on the military as is because, uh, well, the war was over and maybe there's some military operations that's still going on at the time. And certainly with like the rise of the Cold War or early periods of that, he, I think Eisenhower would spend the money use that money instead to build infrastructure the state highway system that we have now was because the eisen president eisenhower from what i remember he took that military budget and used it on the infrastructure to get the highway system that we have so that's one yeah. thing that people can do yeah um and yeah i i agree and and simply put I, if if I were the president, I would take the money, or however however much it would be, if we were to cut the military spending by forty three percent, and I would put it into things like repairing the roads, uh, repair fi- fixing up education, forget making America great again, make education great again. There's a number of things we need to make great again. I mean, there's a few things we're never entirely perfect, so I'm I don't I just I find it better to say like we I'd like to make this planet great again. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. Per, per, perfection, perfection is an abstract concept. Let's not strive for perfection. Let's strive for excellence. And because my dad never said practice makes perfect because he didn't believe in perfect as like a, a concept. He always says practice makes better for that reason. Yeah. And there's people who say you got to practice correctly. Like perfect practice makes perfect. I used to hear that in a music class I used to have where I'd play the tuba. He'd say, Perfect practice makes perfect. That's interesting. Yeah. And I haven't heard that, but that does make sense because you can incorrectly practice something and stuff like yeah. that. Like uh, if I, uh, yeah. I'm, but I'm a tuba. I'm big and brass, and you can blow me. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to share. I, just like you mentioned tuba, and I decided just like share that because that's how my mind is somehow. It's sometimes you just mention something and then my mind immediately goes to a meme. Yeah, and Lonely Wolf posts quite a bit of funny things in a, a Twitter group for a podcast I have. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that video you link you put from a vi- YouTube video, I, I'm still uh, I, I, I'm questioning my will to live after seeing that lady. <laughs> that? Oh, man. <laughs> Is this like that? It was a woman from the Ukraine who was protesting, and she like stripped off all her clothes. And she was—I don't know why she was holding like a paddle. She was holding like an oar or a paddle or something like that. It was—I don't want to know why she was holding it. I mean, I think the main thing was like, "I want you to row away, like row away, row away, row away." Speaking like, of protests, I, rem- I remember like a few years ago that Britain had a protest and it was about like uh, porn and stuff like that or something like that. I don't remember why, but I remember hearing about it on the Jimquisition podcast where basically how they protest is that like it was a bunch of women sitting on a bunch of men's faces. And I was like, I kudos to the British for protesting in interesting ways like that. 
That I think I think that's probably the the funniest way of protesting ever. Besides people when when they heard that Donald Trump was now president, just looking into the air and screaming like, "Yeah." There's certain ways of protesting I personally disagree with, and then there's certain ways where I'm like, "Okay, I I get I I think it's more uh, productive." For instance, if you're calling if you call for someone's death, you're not protesting. That's rioting. If you are peacefully protesting, huh? I agree. I, be, I agree that I don't want Donald Trump to die, period, because, like, I, in spite of, like, what he has done, I don't think his death should be justified in any way. And another thing, tacti yeah. tactically, if he dies, that makes him a martyr er, for the, his base. It goes to Pence as well. It goes to Pence. It, it also – yeah, it goes to Mike Pence as well. Mike's worse. Yeah. I would – yeah, if we, if we lived under Pence as president, like – People in Indiana. I know a guy from Indiana who who did not who 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 suffered under Pence's uh, governorship there. If Pence was president, I think we'd have it far worse, and we would have accomplished nothing. We would have just made the situation ten times worse. Um, the whole pro life thing. I think pro life is a lie. To be honest with you, I think that it. If you are truly pro life, then. Simply put, I don't think a fetus is necessary. I, I, I used to be if I am, I am in the sense of if you if you harm a pregnant woman and the fetus dies, then I would consider that murder. She did not want you to do that to her. Mm -hmm. If she does not want to continue the pregnancy, then I do not consider it murder, as she's the one that's keeping the thing alive. I think it is her choice. I think when brainwaves. Are detected. I, I I would not go forward with the abortion in my state. I don't know about Washington State, but in Utah, I think we cut it off at twenty two weeks. I think, and in others, it's like twenty four, like Pennsylvania, for instance. I'm not sure what it is in Washington State. I have to look into it, but I, I would agree with along those lines. Been uh, between like a because for me personally, what what at what point is it a lie? If it has a brain, I would say that that and in some way that fetus has a kind of a sentience in a way if it has a brain but that's personal too and so just because of where i draw the line doesn't mean that someone else draws the line differently and stuff like that and it's totally about the autonomy issue about yeah. like whether they have the pregnancy or not and stuff like that that's definitely a, a that's where I'm in. That I'm definitely a pro-choice. And but yeah, but Mike Pence, all he also believes yeah. in gay conversion therapy. And like, what the fuck is that? <sighs> I have several. I have family members and friends that are part of the LGBTQI plus alphabet soup and stuff like that. And yeah, I'm as, I'm <laughs> not gonna. I don't. It, it, it's on, it, the only reason I would vote for someone that has questionable views on that is because I'm voting in voting in the party. Like there, in certain areas of like Montana or rural places in Nebraska, I, I can understand tactically for a Democratic candidate to be a pro-choice candidate, but elect that candidate into a state representative or into Congress that way because I'm voting in a Democrat, even though they have questionable views or they believe in pro-choice i think it's important sometimes to vote in the democrat and as opposed to the republican and so that way you know, vote in the party so that the party can start gaining control of the house or the senate and so on and so forth or even on the state level yeah and to be honest with, with you i don't think there's i don't think i'd ever be supportive of just like if i were to be in a party i don't think i would agree with every single facet of a party if i were to I've never been a Republican. In fact, my family is very politically diverse. I have two Democrat. Uh, I have two parents that are Democrats. that are on the left, um, quite left wing actually. I have some relatives who are uh, right wing, conservative Christians, uh, and uh, like religiously mixed. Uh, like I got Catholics. Uh, some were raised as Mormons, things like that. Some are apathistic. Then I got some who are liberals and conservatives and progressives. Democrats and Republicans. I might be the only libertarian in the family, but um, you know, I don't. And then there's some who are independent, or and then there's apolitical people, which that's fine. Um, you know, and overall, I I have enjoyed uh, discussing capitalism and communism and just politics in general, and and just hanging out and uh, showing off our hats and beanies and uh, fedoras and stuff. That is always a pleasure. Uh, I will wrap this up here as I sure. feel like 
I feel like we've gone over uh, quite a bit, and uh, I hope to have you both back on uh, another time. I did discuss men's issues. I would like to bring Lonely Wolf on to, again, for, uh, for uh, I guess, to have more of a fleshed-out conversation about that type of thing. We yeah, did it's talk one of those about that yeah. needs it. It's sort of like a reform movement that's that's oh, yes. about needed, and and even and I think there's and there's probably aspects of feminism as well that probably has yeah. the, that that has their share of problems as well. That like um, but it's like the it's not really fair to use the horseshoe theory because I get I get caught, I get accused of that as well. They say, oh yeah, MRA, you're just like the um, what do they call it? The they kind of think of you as like a. Manosphereum? I don't know. Yeah, Mick yeah, Cow. just like the MGTOW. No. Oh. Are you there, Only Wolf? Oh, he oh, muted he's himself. Out. Yeah, he muted himself. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me and him did kind of had. Uh, he, I have a uh, one of my best friends is is LGBT, right? And I wanted to. I was going to mention that before we end this. Um, and I showed him a video. And my, he's like, he's transgender. So I mentioned. I I, I showed one of the Lonely Wolf's videos about that actually about trans men's issues and he, he actually started crying because he was he was grateful that he saw a video that finally someone could someone was talking about it because he couldn't really find much about the topic and he saw and i saw one of those video and i i told him that and he and he was glad to hear that and, and yeah i do believe we need to reform those type of ideologies like there's the mm -hmm. obvious like militant they hate the an entire group and they use uh, cherry-picked instances like the turfs will use cherry-picked instances of trans people committing crimes uh, radical feminists will use uh, cherry-picked instances of men committing crimes, and uh, MR radical MRAs will ch take cherry-picked inst instances of women committing crimes. I think that's, of course, wrong. Uh, yeah. And, of course, I, I think that'll be interesting for a, a, a second chat. Uh, it, it, it's been very uh, nice having you on, uh, Jonathan, and uh, I, I have, uh, I'm going to check out some of your videos and... Uh, of course, when Lonely Wolf's next video comes out, I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, so thank you for joining me, Lonely Wolf, and uh, thanks for joining me, Jonathan. No problem. And, I enjoyed yep. the nice. conversation having, actually. Yeah, I'll be looking yeah. forward to doing more of these if you want to. Sure. Absolutely. Let me know of a time, and we can set that up. And thank, thank you to everyone who has listened to this broadcast, whether it was live or after the fact. And uh, I hope you all have a good night, and until next time.